this man who stormed the Capitol building, who was uh, inside the Senate chambers, not only had zip ties so that he could uh, take prisoners, but he also had a handgun on his hip on the left-hand side there on the picture. Yeah, it does yeah. really look like There's a man in a blue backpack that I want you to pay attention to. Yeah, he's going to come off the right side of the screen. Yes. Look there how the police handle this guy. He is taking oh. it to this cop. Oh my God. None of the other cops are None doing None of the other anything. cops have shot at this man or beat the fuck out of him or nothing. They're just... That guy's like, over here, right this way. Yeah, come on, boys, come on. Oh, my goodness. But the current context is now fundamentally different, involving use of our platform to incite violent insurrection against a democratically elected government. We believe the risks of allowing the president to continue to use our service during this period are simply too great. Therefore, we are extending the block we have placed on his Facebook and Instagram accounts indefinitely and for at least the next two weeks until the peaceful transition of power is complete. How do you guys feel about that censoring? I have mixed feelings on that. Uh, I, Edward yeah. Snowden uh, had a great the tweet. The biggest mixed feelings about yeah. this. Okay. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself. I have so much to say. I have things to say about this. So much to say. I brought a notebook. Oh man, I wish I would have. I have. So, so let's just come in on this bitch. Much to say. I mean, you go ahead. I'm just getting everything open right now. And okay. Stuff, you know what I mean? but Hello again, internet. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is three averagely intelligent dudes discussing dangerous ideas, and boy, there's a lot of danger going on. A lot right of now. danger going yeah. on right now. So, uh, this is, what time is it? It is 11.27 on Thursday, January 7th, in the good United States of America. I think you know what we're going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty you sure idea. you're aware. I'm pretty sure you're aware. So, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. Our democracy is under siege. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we're starting there. Uh, the headlines about this are absurd to me. Yeah. Absurd. Uh, dude, somebody posted absurd. on... Um, Reddit, you know, I was doing Reddit interactions and stuff. Check us out. We're on Reddit now. Yep. And um, the one of the things was domestic terrorism. They label it domestic terrorism. Now, we had just so happened to have a conversation about terrorism and what that was and wasn't. And I was just like, is it, though? I was like, is this terrorism? Looks like protesting. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, which, again, interesting. Looks like protesting. Yeah, it looks like protesting. I as, would as I would call it rioting. As defined, it, well, that's what I was going to say. There's a caveat to that. It looks like protesting as it has, the definition has become in the year of 2020. Mm. The definition, like the 2020 version of protesting is what this is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't want to go straight into it. I, I mean, I think we're just going to unpack this idea as we go on, mm -hmm. but I'll probably be bringing it up a couple times. Um, when the Black Lives Matter thing was going on, it was the riot word was getting thrown around a lot, okay, a lot. I actually think that I referred to it as mostly rioting when we did our episodes and stuff about it, um, just because that's just kind of how I kept thinking of it and how it was like perceived. Thugs, but looters, those rioting, right? You know what I mean? That yeah. was that happened a lot. I've not seen that so much this time. I've only seen the word protesting being thrown around a lot. But I would say this is as much rioting as any other riot happened. I mean, they didn't light anything on fire, but they broke a bunch of shit. So Yeah, it was uh, localized in one specific location, mm. in one specific building. Really, it was localized within like the first 25% of a building. Mm -hmm. It really didn't even reach a lot of it, but that's why it seems so. But the context of what building it was, i.e. the U.S. Capitol building, and the circumstances that surrounded it, I think, are reason enough for me to say, like, yeah, this was a localized riot in the fucking Capitol Here, building. Here's the thing, too, that that uh, I haven't seen talked about. Uh, and I'm, to be honest, it's it's kind of breaking as we're doing this. So, you know, it might right, be we're learning there. things. Um, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about looting. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, when the BLM protests and the George Floyd protests were going on, all people wanted to talk about was the looting. You can protest all you want, but how dare you break into Target and steal some bed sheets, right? Yeah. That's all people want to talk about. The number one photo I've seen from this incident is a motherfucker looting the podium of the speaker. Yeah. 
That is looting <laughs> on another level. When when yeah. Bigo comes out of fucking Nancy Pelosi's office with a piece of her mail, that's looting. <laughs> that's looting on a degree that is far beyond stealing a mm. pair of shoes, mm. okay? That's just a whole other fucking animal to mm-hmm. me. You're literally looting our Capitol building. <laughs> yeah. You're looting things that have been there. Like, they, were, they wiped blood on a the bust of one of the fucking presidents inside oh, of that geez. building. So what you're yeah. telling me is that you want to make America great again by defacing and destroying our Capitol building. That's yeah. that's fucking crazy. Um, so in this episode, we're going to be unpacking a lot of that. We're going to talk about the riots and the protesting. We're also going to be talking about the implications, how this started, uh, what it means going forward. We're going to be unpacking a little bit about what exactly is going on with our election process and all that. So uh, definitely stay tuned for the whole thing. Yeah, so this all started. Uh, I want to bring this up really quick because I – I kept seeing a lot of people talking about is Trump at fault for starting an insurrection, essentially. Like, is he now uh, an insurrection leader? And so I was, at first I was like, I don't think he is. Like, how could you say, like, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't tell people to um, storm the Capitol. I was wrong. He, he actually had this this rally at the at before all this went down. I didn't know about this part, but Trump had this rally. Yeah, and huge rally. Yeah, huge rally, and he says things like that. He, oh, I'm gonna play it because we need to be able to. Yeah, it. I would love to see yeah. it because I haven't seen that. I have so. not seen that either. Yeah. Okay. The demonstrators, some in tactical gear, were urged to go to the Capitol by the president himself. We're gonna walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength, and you have to be strong. Donald Trump lost the election by more than 7 million votes. His lawsuit... Uh, there was a shot right before it showed Donald Trump speaking, and when it said the men wearing uh, military gear, and I want to see that man's shoulder patch. Can you run it right about there? Play that, like, right there? Okay. Um, pa- the uh, demonstrator... The guy in the tan. Some in Pause. tactical... Okay, never mind. I was looking at that symbol there gear. that looks like a white supremacy symbol. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. we're okay, never mind. I, I, mean, I can't... Well, there's clear right. enough. I would be willing to bet... Lots of money that there are p- white supremacists Lots in that crowd. Yeah, Lots just, of them. Donald Trump That's lost the election by more than 7 million votes. His lawsuits were rejected by dozens of judges. But still, he told his followers that the election was rigged. I mean, you kind of feel like Trump incited this riot then? Or After no? listening like to those word? words outside of where what he was in it's D.C.? A, he I'm was assuming? down the street Dude, from the Literally, Capitol, right, right down the street. Like this, I watched Tim Cass. Well, actually, I didn't. I fell asleep watching it but it was like i think i I remember like in the first 15 minutes one guy that was at the rally said that there he assumed that there were hundreds of thousands of people at the rally now the footage when you look at the footage is mostly of the attack on the capitol so it it doesn't look like a hundred thousand people because it's not it's maybe a couple hundred maybe a thousand it's hard to tell but apparently that guy was saying that there was like the most people he's ever been in a crowd with ever. And I was More like people than his inaugural. <laughs> ah, yeah. Shout facts. Out Trump's like just inaugural. so many people. And I've seen some photos and they're like, you know, they're not from very high up. So it's hard to tell, but it, like it goes far into the background and it's like, this is, this is at the rally at the rally. Oh, There's so oh. many people, but you have to remember a lot of these people are like older people, yeah. you know, like they're not all these super hardcore dudes. I think they lost people along the way, right? So like some people never left the rally. They're right. Like, some people didn't go the with them at all. And then so a small group went to the count. And then some people saw them breaking through fences and gates and shit. Yeah, that's was true. Like, the people, this is where I stopped. <laughs> I watched a Skynet live footage when you, I think you posted it in the chat, but I tuned into that just to see. I was like, I'm interested to see what like the British news is going to say about this. Um, and so clowning. Yeah, Sky Sky was clowning, but they had a good live footage view of crowds. Like they showed footage of the people breaking through like the initial fences to get on the lawn. And then crowds were like in the background cheering when they got to the steps and the cops were falling back and everything. Like they were literally people in the background, like, Yeah, you get them, it. Guys. go in there. Get They're them. like, I'm not really gonna follow you, no. but you guys go ahead. That's to, a ten years in prison, but to, to bring it back to your question about is Donald Trump responsible mm-hmm. or or you know, that's the kind of area that we're playing with right mm-hmm. now. I I look at it like the Sopranos. If Tony Soprano is talking to all of the supporters, aka his mafioso dudes, and he's like, We gotta show this guy that we mean business. 
I don't want any weakness. I want you to go inside of that bar and show him how strong we are. And you show him we don't take any bullshit. And then some heads get cracked open and some people get killed. Would you say Tony Soprano is responsible? Yeah. Like told them to go beat them up? It's double speak. Yeah. I feel that. I feel you. I feel you. The only thing that is keeping me from saying that is just that that was a short five to Agreed. ten, like a minute long clip. I gotta go. I haven't seen the whole. The whole I gotta listen yes. to the whole speech sure. and see what he was talking about. But it's a bad look, though. It's I, a terrible. Look. It's a terrible look. Because <laughs> prior look. to that, I thought he just didn't say anything. I, I didn't. I didn't realize I thought it was that just this tweets. rally. You're right. I thought it was just the tweets, and I was like, I mean, come on. If you go out and storm on some tweets, and you're a dummy. But I mean, this man. Was the reason they all gathered in the first place, okay? Mm -hmm. And then was like, hey, post this gathering, we're going to walk down there and we're going to get strong on them. He said, you got to go to the Capitol. And you gotta show them how strong. Like, like I would, I would. Never did insane. Martin Luther King say, "Hey, we're all gonna walk down to Washington D.C. and get strong." And we're gonna <laughs> show how <laughs> strong we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It he just, might have that. This it, is the same. Have, but it was hard when somebody's talk, like, "Check out this YouTube video." Yeah, in the facts. This is the same you know man that, that told the Proud Boys when he was. And now, now listen, listen. I I agree with you that the Proud Boys are not a white supremacist group. Yeah. Joe Biden presented it as if they were, yep. and Trump said, "Stand." back and stand by and now we're seeing this moment. <laughs> people who are probably the people that would probably say yeah i'm a proud boy yeah. Yeah. standing up they, and they, stepping out yeah <laughs> and getting strong <laughs> yeah getting real strong they've been, they've been standing by Dude, for this moment right yeah here. i mean i mean i feel you on that the standing by has been since till january 6th yeah like for sure um and i think that i think that like you said, I'd have to see like more of the context, but right now I would be willing to like I could see it going to trial. I could see mm. them taking him to trial. Like mm. she's talking about like impeachment and stuff like that, which is ridiculous because that's an even longer process yeah. than if you just let Joe Biden become. It's the a president. more serious process, though. It's, it's a more serious because it's it has once you become impeached, you then have to go into a criminal trial. Yeah. And I think it stops him from ever being able to run again, obviously. Too. Yeah, like, there's other you things. Impeached and no, because yeah. right now he's still a available and able to run again next year. If he and wants if they to. can yeah. prove yeah. high next crimes time, and yeah. misdemeanors, if they yeah. can prove incitement. Mm-hmm. You know, things it's like true. that. Now, when especially I say, when um, like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut oh, you no, off. I was just going to say when I say prove, I just mean like present enough evidence to where the Senate a reasonable doubt. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, one of the penalties for causing a resu- uh, insurrection insurrection is you can never hold office. Yeah. Politically. Public again. office. So I could see he was he. I will say, though, it was hilarious. I've seen images. He was like. I don't know, maybe like 50 feet in the air on this giant scissor lift, given that speech. No, really. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> My mind is. Yeah, I mean, he was high up. He definitely had. He that, had to be uh, high up. There are times when I think to myself, "Is this the reality that's supposed to be happening?" Mm-hmm. This is one of those moments when I see red-hatted uh, political protesters storming our Capitol. But I never would have. Th- if you had told me in my lifetime I would see that, I would have said, "We're not a failed state. This is America." Oh, my God. I am so glad that you said that because that is the perfect segue into the other thing that I saw today about this that just blew me away. Revolt is not is a word that, you know, can, can be used here in some way. I just want to jump people in are here on the stairs. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Uh, yes, because Congressman Michael Waltz of Florida, he is inside on the House floor. He's on the phone with us Listen now. Congressman. Congressman Waltz, could you give us an update? Yeah, hi, Dana. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, we are on the House floor. We've been uh, informed that uh, protesters have penetrated uh, the Capitol. Tear gas has been deployed. Uh, members are now have masks that are in the Capitol and deploying those masks, and we're now being evacuated. And you are being eva- are you being evacuated as well? Yes, the entire House floor is being evacuated. And I just want to say, Dana, this is despicable. This is not who we are as a country. Uh, we were debating this through uh, debate and discussion uh, from our interpretations of the Constitution. Uh, members were objecting to. Excuse me, sorry, we're 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 moving kind of quickly here, but members were objecting to 
people's concerns, but there is no place for violence. I've served in places overseas in Africa and Afghanistan and other where where violence is how we solve our disputes, not here in America. We solve it through debate and discussion and courts and judges. Used to. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, wait, 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 wait. So it's cool to do it over there, <laughs> but, oh, not, yeah. <laughs> but not here. Yeah, not here. Listen, listen, can you run that back, please? Because if I'm not mistaken, I am pretty sure that that man said, this is not how we solve our problems here in America. In over, I've served in places where we saw right. I.e. for America, where we solved our problems with violence, <laughs> but not but here. not here. <laughs> I could not. I literally busted wow. out loud. I laughing. didn't even catch that, dude. dude I, I laughed that. so loud. I was like, "Wow, it's cool to just do it yeah. over there, but not here." Libya, in Africa, Libya, fine. He said Somalia, Af- fine. Yep, you could be a uh, hey, Afghanistan. Get as rowdy as you want to on mm. them boys. If they, you want if they, bust open if they disagree palace? with you, you just sit them down. <laughs> Here, the right way to do it is to talk and yeah. debate and discuss. Over there, drop a nuke on yeah. them. Fuck in it. Iraq, we debate and discuss by dropping hellfire, hellfire missiles on their cities. Yes. In America, we use the missiles of our mind. <laughs> and I, I also want to bring one point is that this man is now saying that in – in the scenario where he is in the position to be on the receiving end of the <laughs> violence, he is not down with that. <laughs> but before, when it's the other governments other government? on the receiving Correct. end, totally he even totally said, cool. He even said, as a perpetrator of political violence in other countries, this I just don't cool. believe we should do that in America. Like, clown. We should probably listen to him. It's probably really bad. Oh, man. I just, I mean. Wow. I just That's thought, a great catch. Yeah, I didn't catch that. I <laughs> immediately stopped and was just like, the hypocrisy, I just can't. I just can't. But, like you said, it is. It's the same thing. Um, as, a, as a young child, I never thought that this is what it meant to be, like, political in America. I never, not once thought. You know what I mean? Like I thought it was putting flowers in the barrels of guns. <laughs> I thought it was eloquent men giving speeches at the Washington Monument. And then you get persuaded by whoever you're going to get persuaded by, and you put your vote in, and then it's just, that's it. Yeah. I never not once thought that we fight about it or could storm the Capitol building. Did not even know that that was possible. Honestly, did not know that I can't believe that it's an actual thread of discussion that I've seen from people that I respect where they're like, maybe we should just split the country in two. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm not what? even joking. Okay. I've like seen, real people? I've seen well people in my life that I consider well-educated. That's what I mean. Uh, are, are, <laughs> I've seen statements of, well, maybe we should just split America left I and agree. right and find some way to – and I'm like – if I they don't left agree. up to me, I'd split it in fifty-two ways. <laughs> I don't. I would I, now. If you want to talk about balkanization under the umbrella of the yes. United States of America, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I could see a balkanization happening. If you're talking about splitting us into two sovereign separate? identities, no, sir. Fuck that. You're talking about no. how long before mm. that fucking that is a demilitarized zone? It is you see civil what I'm war saying? number two. Yeah, one hundred percent. Two point oh, yeah. Two which they've been talking about for fucking since QAnon. Yeah. They've been talking Dude. about civil war two. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Literally, I'm pretty sure, I don't remember which founding father, but I'm pretty sure a founding father was quoted as saying, paraphrasingly, I don't even know if that's the right way to say mm. that, but he, he basically said that, wh- like, somebody asked him why they thought that the colonies needed to be formed together under one roof. And he said, because as separate sovereign nations, they will wage war, that is what sovereign nations have always done. Mm-hmm. And I was like, her, Mike Waltz. It's cool <laughs> to do it to the other guy. Other guy, but you don't do, do it, it here. You. you don't do it to yourself. Yeah. So it's like. You don't shit where you eat, yeah. buddy. Okay? And so like you you said, don't shit where you eat. We make, we make <laughs> the blue guys. We, it, it's it's easy. Hey, you ever play Halo? It's always the red versus the blue guy. So they will totally fucking do it. They'll totally yeah. do it in a heartbeat. But anyways, I thought, you know, uh, and then other other interesting part about this was, again, when I was talking about people calling it domestic terrorism and whatnot, I was like, what? You know? Right. But. I mean, there's tear gas used. I seen a man running around with uh, zip ties, like he was about yeah. to take hostages. With yeah. a handgun <laughs> on room. his hip. Yeah, he had a handgun on and his hip. I will take, say that the that District up. of Columbia is not an open carry area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, cannot, you cannot open do that. carry a weapon, in especially the in the Capitol <laughs> building. <laughs> you want me to uh, send it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh- shoot that one away for sure. Yeah, that's a great image. I think we should also look at um, the image that John dropped in the. This uh, one. Like, yeah, this one. <laughs> Uh, this might be the worst bit? look I've ever seen. This is the worst look I've ever seen 
maybe you know like top 10 for sure like this is one of the worst photos i've ever seen what is this so if you look here at this man with the zz top-esque beard and just oh. go slightly lower from that he is wearing a sweatshirt that appears to say camp auschwitz oh. with a skull and crossbones underneath it and then wow. some more text correct. below it it's is hard to say that. what that is why would you wear that? Uh -huh. I'm going to send it well, to the uh, oh, group. Oh, look, I put Camp Auschwitz. The first thing that came up was hoodie. So people know it's out here. Um, store selling neo-Nazis. This is three hours ago. So that is a brand new hoodie that that man bought for this. The image is in our group chat. Wow. Fire. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, this man wow. showed up to the Capitol Hill protest with his anti-Semitic hoodie. Oh, the, the small text at the bottom said, Work brings freedom, which is a English translation of Abert Mach Frey, which was on the gate of Auschwitz as you entered. This man's a super fan. <laughs> Jesus yeah, he's a he's a Christ. he's a camp Auschwitz. Super and I remember fan. talking about this. This crazy. And, you know, I've always thought. And oh, okay, now look, all these people, all these people. Uh, it's important to remember, like you said, there wasn't that many people there. Like, nope. let's just start with that. Like, there was not yeah. that many people there. Because I hear people talk. You, we talked about this at great length. That there's this idea that there's this huge anti-Semitic movement out there, or even an anti-black movement out there, or or all these things. White supremacy is like on the rise and it's running rampant. Like, I mean, there's like a thousand people there, and I'm not. Uh, so I'm not saying that they don't exist, right? There are yeah. neo Nazis. There are white supremacists. Um, there is a such thing as um um white privilege i guess in a sense i mean you know i never really bought into it but some things from this have persuaded my opinion about that a little bit so um you know those people exist and they're out here obviously they're you know, not rioting they're, they're with crazy. antifa or blm but, i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah no for sure for sure these is but um it's fascinating it's fascinating to see them out here in full display you know um and 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 accepted in their community and yeah oh like, like nobody was being like hey man turn that yeah, inside like, out whoa that was a wild they were clapping them on the wild back shirt if you wear. pull yeah. up that picture of the man with the zip ties you yeah. can see this man who stormed the capitol building who was uh inside the senate chambers not only had zip ties so that he could uh take prisoners but he also had a handgun on his hip on the left hand side there on the picture. Yeah, it does yeah. really look like and that. this those are not like zip ties like the ones that you're like when you say zip ties, people are like No, those are hand wrapping, leg wrapping zip ties. Oh, yeah. those the FBI big FBI zip ties. Hey, and, and this man more tactical than I've seen anybody. Like yeah. fact I've deployed to many war zones and that man's wearing more gear than most people even get. And I will make yes. this point too. Um I tried I made a terrible joke and I'm not gonna make it here, but the idea that People are asking, where are the cops? Mm -hmm. Where are the cops? Right there. Right <laughs> fucking there. That's, That's where the swat. cops are. That's full SWAT. That's where the cops, cops are. Cops, yeah. The cops are trying rip to zip tie your, Democrats. Your fucking badge patches and shit. You slap <laughs> on your fucking Trump America <laughs> patches and you then you're ready to These go. are the same people that Trump brought from the motherfucking prison SWAT units to come <laughs> Quell the protests in front of the White House. The, this uh, is the same motherfucker. What was that word? <laughs> the the word that we uh, learned about in that podcast. The posse. Uh, oh, I forgot. But uh, yeah, yeah, posse expirandus or some shit. It some had some shit like that, yeah. some, yeah. Latin some Latin word. word of posse. Damn, I forgot about <laughs> yeah. that. I forgot. That's about them that. boys, Call though. Back. That's them boys. Yeah, that's. The I boys. mean, while we're roasting the. <laughs> <laughs> the Trump supporter gang. I, I don't even know who to call these people. You know what I mean? Like they're obviously those people. We're roasting those those people. people. Yeah. I don't. You know what I mean? Trump supporter. One guy was like a Confederate flag supporter. So I don't know. Which if, yeah, you is, can't be like. How are you supporting the president of the United States of America if you bring a Confederate flag to the Capitol and wave it in the Capitol building? Like, what's that got to do with Trump? If you That's got, literally the antithesis. You can't support the president of one nation while saying, we love the nation that wanted to overthrow the, that nation. The <laughs> only thing that the MAGA flag and the Confederate flag have in common is they both fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> they have the same color in their both. Yeah, they're literally oh the, my the God. flags of the losing team. I did some research on this, though, and, and I'm going to redo it because I might have searched it wrong in, in – in, for Reddit, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time ever that the Confederate flag has flown in Capitol building. That's a great Period. question to ask. Google. Yep, yep. Because it, um, 
I mean, I did. I already asked it. But again, as I got <laughs> rightfully called out on um, Reddit. It wasn't the White House. It's not it was the, the White Capitol House. Building. It's the Capitol Building. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think you might I, – I think I might have, like, subconsciously planted that idea in your head because I was talking about how this reminded me sort of – not because it's kind of the same situation, but it reminded me of when – Andrew Jackson got inaugurated as the seventh president of the United States. And then at the reception at the White House, like literally the whole crowd from the inauguration came and they just like trashed the White House, just destroyed it. But it was more in like a victory Mm. riot than a lost riot. Interesting too, the flanked by portraits of Civil War era figures too. Yeah, oh my God, that's Jefferson right there. Yeah, exactly. That was very interesting about this whole, I mean, foreshadowing, I hope not. Uh, Behind the man, hold on, right there. Behind the man in the photo, two portraits reflect the fractured nation of the country during the 1860s. To the man's right is Charles Sumner, an abolitionist. To his left is John C. Calhoun, a defender of slavery. Mm-hmm. Oh, and people sorry. say it was John about C. states' Calhoun? rights. Y'all yeah. motherfuckers <laughs> drive me crazy. That is part of it. It's part of it. Yeah. States' rights yeah. to It was own the slaves. states' rights to own slaves. Yeah, yeah, that's the states' rights part that they were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the specific right that they were talking That was the specific right, which yeah. is not a right. And then, of course, we can't, we can't have this conversation without talking about the crowning man of the hour. You know, there's always that one guy that just comes with the best costume. You know what I mean? He just has the best costume mm, for whatever yeah. party you're trying to go to yeah. or, or um, whatever. You know, I've been to raves and I've seen this guy and I'm like, that's the guy. Yeah, a lot of people that's were just wearing, you know, Camp Auschwitz hoodies. But this guy went no, the extra this 10. This dude no, no. is this guy w- the goat. <sighs> yep. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> wow. You, wait, hold on. Did you see that? When you typed in Buffalo Rioter, the image of that old man being pushed down by the police and cracking his head open is what yeah, they showed. Yeah, from Black Lives Matter, right? That got yeah. memory that was, real fast. That yeah. was the rioter That's in the that rioter. story? Yeah, in no, Buffalo? No, that was not the rioter. That yeah. old man? I yeah. had but these guys are protesters. protesters. <laughs> but that man was a rioter? So this many people told time. me that he was, like, jamming the censors with his cell phone. I'm like, I've never seen a man that age with a fucking Instagram. So don't tell me that man he knew how to jam the fucking censors. radios. What are you talking about, dude? I'm not with it. I'm not with it. But, you know, wow. Wow. These guys showed Look up. They're real guy. characters, man. Wow. This dude. I mean, when's the last time he's left his patch of land to uh, come out here in the real world? Uh, hey. When he was the uh, main event of SummerSlam. <laughs> that was the last time. That he <laughs> when he was fighting the Undertaker at SummerSlam, that was the last time that he came so out. So yeah. funny. I mean, look at the with the patriotic face paint and the terrible look again. This man to his right in the yellow hoodie. Uh, mm. His right, our yeah. left, is wearing the easy. The easy. <laughs> <laughs> I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Stop! I'm fucking with that Kanye, oh, and I'm fucking with, with that, that Trump. Trump. Hey, Trump fucks with Kanye. I fuck with Kanye too. <laughs> Kanye fucks with Trump. I fuck with Kanye too. So funny, man. Very interesting. This guy. It's the red hats for me, man. That oh, shit yeah. is like. It's it, the red hats. Oh, yeah. It's like it, it's it looks like a Nazi armband. Yeah. I mean, you like, can't like, uh, you know, there's some really dumb fashion rules that people have come up with, like the whole white thing after Labor Day, which if you actually look up the original reason for that, it's like it's dumb Yeah. to me. But like you like I really wouldn't even like I'm one of those guys like I, I carry around a bandana with me everywhere. And people told me when I lived in L.A. that that was dangerous. And I was like, maybe. But I doubt that I'll find myself in the neighborhoods that that might be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also, like, I go to sleep at, like, 10 o'clock in the the evening. So it's, like, very rare that, like, somebody's just going to be driving by, catch my bandana, assume that me, dressed the way I am, am a gang member, and then shoot me while they're just driving (laughs) down the road in broad daylight. But I would not be caught dead in a red hat oh, right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> you could not catch me outside mm-hmm, in a red hat mm-hmm, at all. Mm-hmm. You know, no especially with way. any type of white lettering or anything. I see people no trying way. to make, like, spoofs off the hat and stuff. I'm like, from distance, you look like a MAGA. You look like a MAGA. <laughs> like, people, the that. people that will get that joke will avoid seeing you. They will go to the <laughs> other side of the street, so it will not even be funny. <laughs> One of the things, too, is, like, uh, that, that really jumps out at me is the cognitive dissonance I've seen on social media. I've seen people claiming that the rioters were secretly Antifa. I've seen. I have heard that. I've heard. I've heard that. I've seen. uh, You know, a lot of those kind of what we what we call conspiracy theories or whatever. Mm -hmm. People talking about QAnon and things like that. 
and I think I want to reiterate what the point that you made. This is not all Trump supporters. Nope. This is a very core, fundamentally fucked up uh, insurgency within our within our nation. Yes. Like those mm-hmm. people right there. Like you can say what you want about Antifa. Yeah, they do some. That is some fucked up shit. Some of them deserve to be in prison. They mm-hmm. they do some fuckery. But my God. Uh, if Antifa had entered the Senate chambers and stolen Nancy Pelosi's mail, <laughs> everyone uh, wearing a, a red hat would be up in arms complete, for those people to be hung complete, for treason. Complete. Yeah, and absolutely. instead, those people are saying it was probably Antifa still. Mm, yeah, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's wild. absolutely ridiculous. Um, there's one thing I talked about where, uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about how they feel like Trump. Well, this is the news, actually, but um, about conspiracy theories how he's leaned so heavy on conspiracy theories to to gather his his fan base and so a lot of these people are people who are prone to buy into any type of narrative no not say any type of narrative but alternative narrative they are as we referred to them in our last episode the terrorism episode at risk or easily mm, influence people. Influence people, 100%. percent mm. yeah. Great point. Obviously. Cause and they, you know, they can be easily influenced to suicide bomb or to, as this amazing post right here says, document your felonies on social media for great bragging rights. <laughs> Reddit, man. They be I wanted to bring it. that up, too, because you mentioned about how this man stole. Yeah, Bico. Like, that's actually they got a his name felony. Already. They already know his name. They know this man. They, the they will arrest Everybody this man. Knows who, dude, uh, look. <laughs> If nobody got away from Black Lives Matter. Dude, riots, they arrested right? that they woman out from, from a, ca- a traffic camera footage. They were able to facial identification, even through her bandana, who she was to figure out. Or no, I think they found her by tracking her shirt. It, the woman who threw the Molotov cocktail yep. in Portland and lit that cop car on fire. <laughs> she got tracked down because they found the Etsy shop where she bought the shirt from because it was made by this girl by her. You know, it's like one of a kind type shit. And they fucking asked her for her purchase records in, in relations to the investigation, got her name, and then arrested her. There was a man who in Portland, I believe, or Seattle, one of the two, threw a uh, incendiary device at the federal building. Mm-hmm. He was wearing a tan um, bulletproof vest, and they ended up tracking him down because his grandmother, who bought the vest for him, left a review on the website. Oh, my God. And these fools are just out here with it. Like They're like, give me a selfie. Hey, get get a picture of me up here. You know what I mean? And I'm just like clown. Hey, the running joke on the internet is these fools won't even wear a mask to commit capital treason. For I, real? Dude, look like at this what man. are you it's doing? Just, that's a mug shot yeah. if I ever seen one. Do you think that? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. That's a good meme. You just swap the mail <laughs> with his mug with shot his mug thing. Shot thing. Do you think this man who, uh, if I remember correctly, his nickname is Bigo? Yeah. Uh, do you think Bigo is ever gonna see freedom? Ever again? Dog, this or do you is think at this man least, is going to be in jail for the rest of life? This is at least a decade, bro. Uh, so, you know what? Actually, in, in research to this, to make my roast on Reddit, some, looking up some of the penalties for the crimes that they're not as stout as you would think they are. That's what like, I was just thinking. I, I was like, you'd be surprised. Like, yo, I remember you used to get your head chopped off for treason. Now yeah. it's like you can revolt against the government. I think it's like less than 10 years. Like people are catching more like time for possession than they are for storming Dude, this capital building major right nadal now. hassan is still alive <laughs> yeah i killed like 20 something motherfuckers in yeah. i like found out that years. some guy that was convicted in the nine like one of the 9 11 trials that's happened um, you know it's mostly foot soldier guys but yeah. one of them is free mm-hmm. he got released last that's year or not. like in 2019 or something like that yeah. so like there's guys that were part of the 9 11 attacks that are just walking mm-hmm. around like they put them they took him out of jail and they took him to the airport, put him on a plane to Morocco. Mm-hmm. Now, we say jail, but what we mean to say is the extrajudicial facility of Guantanamo. Right, 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 right. Where, right. where you could be taken where anything without where being Where they torture the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they'll take these people there, but. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> There's, uh, but my point is a lot of these cats are, are definitely going to spend some time in prison. For Not sure. as much time as I would expect them to. But, like, this dude, the dude we keep seeing carrying the pony. <laughs> I'm running yeah, away. Yeah, can we bring that up, please? I would love to see that. I, I, that's that's got to be the photo the podium, of this whole the podium thing. Podium guy, me. Yeah, this is. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's oh, the wrong no, one. No, we. That's the old one. There's gonna be a new one soon. Don't yeah. worry. If you go to images, you should be able to just pull it up. You missed these. 
great headlines. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fucking guy. This dude dog. waving for it. Oh, oh my this god. I gotta guy. get I gotta get it blown up so here. Funny. Tell us who you are, Stoden Podium Man. Uh, they'll get the facial recognition going. I get it. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It's the wave for me. It's the wave. It's the wave. It's the, wave. It's it's the like, hey, this is fun, isn't it, guys? Like, I just, it's and, so funny how you can get so wrapped up in the moment and yep. so um, influenced by the, the crowd that you really feel like you just can't get away with like, it Like, this all. is going like, to be, no, like, this is a great like, time. You're, you're fine. Like, yeah. this is totally fine. No big deal. I'm like, bro, he's sitting at home now just, like, sweating. Yep. And sweating. Sitting right next to the goddamn podium. <laughs> yeah. Sitting right next to him. He's, like, wiping his sweat. He's like, God, I couldn't fucking, like, you think that maybe I'd get arrested if I tried to take it back? I'd be having that shit on eBay right now trying to get my Make some money. fucking get, get the out fuck of out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, here money. If he Caribbean. hasn't already, <laughs> if he hasn't already started a YouTube channel as Podium Guy, he's missing out. <gasps> yeah, for real. I thought about that for Bigo. Yeah. Like, if Bigo doesn't go to jail, Bigo is gonna be on every conservative talk show for the history <laughs> of forever. <laughs> like, that man is going to be an, a, a conservative celebrity. He looked like the so dude funny. from Tiger King Docky to me. I was. Like he looked like one of the maintenance <laughs> security, just like helping hand guys at the at the. This, farm or whatever the fuck it <laughs> this was. This dude, to me, honestly, looks like one of the, You remember I was telling you, like, there's guys who showed up to the rally knowing that they were going to storm this thing, you know? And, like, there's... Oh, yeah. This they were is one of the dudes who I just feel like he just got talked into it the yes. whole time. Was, I wanted to make this point. Thank you, Rod. I wanted to make this point. This man... You can see, he's wearing, like, <laughs> barely a Barely a Trump like, beanie. Sh- yeah, it's... He looks like a Nothing Bears tactical. fan. <laughs> Nothing you know, This man's, like, ready to go, like, sit on a bus <laughs> in a cold city. But I think it's funny because once <laughs> some of them broke through, oh, no, no, stop, don't tell stop, me. dude, no. <laughs> he put it on bids, eBay. Ten bids. Ten people <laughs> thought that they could buy this. I would one hundred percent buy that. <laughs> and I get arrested. I won't steal it, but I'd buy it. <laughs> That's <laughs> wow. Yeah, but uh. What were you saying back there? He looks like, yeah, he looks like a Buffalo He just Bills looks fan. like a regular guy. <laughs> like a Bears you know, fan. Like, yeah, yeah, he just, you know, he was he just like, oh, yeah, you know, like, we could just get in now. Yeah. You know, these aren't the guys that were, you know, pushing through the police line and shit like that. But you can see how. <laughs> he looks like he was touring the building. <laughs> he looks like my mom <laughs> posing for a photo on vacation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So funny, and like, I just wow. wonder, and like you know, what I mean, in that moment, nothing's going through his mind that 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 could be ten years in prison, dog. Like I can't fucks with it. It's so funny. I can't fucks with it, dude. Uh, fucking Madison was telling me the penalties you can get for like fucking some shit up by being like a notary, like if you just like mm-hmm. put the wrong thing or file the wrong form, like you can get fined tons of fucking money, mm-hmm. and you can steal the speaker of the house's podium, and like apparently just feel okay with it which is so like weird they're... i would have masked up and been just ducking like i, I the only person who came prepared was the guy with the fucking zip ties, zip ties. Yeah, zip like, tie see, that man was prepared. like yeah. masked up some of those heads dudes had to like toe. goggles and full-blown ballistics helmets you know what and stuff i mean like at least trying their I mean, best to these hide. these people were larping just as much <laughs> as the Chaz people were larping agreed like and then of course there's some people around the larpers that are just like hanging out they're just like yeah i might take a podium you know maybe i'll steal this guy's phone you know mm-hmm. like but yeah, they're but LARPing with like loaded guns and all the preparements for war. Yeah, I mean, which is levels of now. The let's shit. talk about yeah. the, let, let, so then let's talk about the response because like you said, this is clearly rioting, stealing. Okay, breaking in it. Like look 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 at this clip that that um. This is the John Capitol posted. Hill yeah. uh the Capitol Hill steps. It's from TikTok, by the way. Yeah. TikTok always coming through. Yeah, right. Real news source right there. Yeah, TikTok. really. <laughs> There's a man in a blue backpack that I want you to pay attention to. Yeah, he's gonna come off the right side of the screen. Yes. Look how there the police goes. handle this guy. He is taking oh. it to this cop. Oh my God. None of the other cops. Are None of the other anything. cops have shot at this man or beat the fuck out of him or nothing. They're just that guy's like over here, right this way. Yeah, come on, boys, come on. Oh my goodness. Doesn't look anything like BLM, does it? I don't know. I guess it depends on the footage. Like, if you look at the footage of the riots from the BLM, it looks very similar. But I'm saying, like, the breaking of the police line with no action taken is the the part that I'm just... 
yeah, that's the part that's crazy. Like, I don't yeah. see no tear gas going off. I don't see yeah, no uh, rubber bullets. I, I don't see none of that. Um, I feel that. But now let's, um, for comparison, I, I put this, I took this snapshot today. Let me uh, put this in the chat real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for, for real, like, I, I look at that and I compare that to Trump being walked across the street to get the photo op in front of the church. <laughs> yes. And... If they can, it's probably a similar number of protesters, right? I would say, give or take. It's probably a, some sort of similar number of protesters. They were able to just clear them out and get Trump across the street for a photo op like it was nothing. They did that shit pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But they're letting these people get into the Capitol building? It just doesn't jive with me. It doesn't jive that those two things can both be true. Yeah. That, that it just doesn't seem like the, an equal f use of force. Yeah, yeah, the thing that that the thing that confuses me the most about it is the fact that like I don't quite understand what it is the police were think like when I looked at those videos of the the BLM shit and we had that uh, our first podcast episode mm -hmm. like I remember pepper spray being used religiously Freely. like not just gratuitously but like literally religiously like I remember them like they would just like spit on somebody and they psh, yeah. pepper spray. Yeah. These dudes are literally reaching out and grabbing Whoa. their batons and riot shields and like, and the cops are like, please stop. Yeah. Just please, please stop. Please sir. Like, remain calm. Remain. <laughs> okay. Remain calm. So I'm working now. I can't be with you. I'm sorry. This is the tweet that's going out. And, uh, of course it's tiny as hell, but, um, you get the point. This, this is what the Capitol steps look like during BLM protests for the record. Uh, I want to find this. Obviously, this is in a tweet. I would love to find this image again. But I remember it looking like that. Yeah. Like, they said they were calling in the National Guard for what was going on with the thing at the thing. I never saw them show up. Never seen They it. showed up at nighttime. Oh, so at nighttime, at night, they showed up, and it was the Capitol Police had gotten flooded home. with tons yeah. of dudes. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knew that January 6th was Everybody going to be knew. a civil yeah. unrest knew. event yeah. at the Capitol building. Yeah. Everybody fucking knew because it was yeah. promoted everywhere. This People showed up with shirts that said January 6th, uh, MAGA Civil War. Yeah. So these – everybody fucking knew, and they didn't put nobody on the steps. Nothing like that, dude. They Nothing. were like, we're just going to put these these bike ramp, these bike rail barriers oh. and then one line of cops behind that, and that should be good. Not to mention the Black Lives Matter protesters and stuff never approached the Capitol Hill at all. They were down the street even for Washington, D.C., other places, nowhere near any type of Capitol buildings or anything. And they were getting, like we talked about, just whooped, ass whooped. We all saw sure. all the TikToks, all yep. the everything. I saw the White House uh, autonomous zone get cleared out in like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yep. When they yeah. had those people that were up in, outside of the White House on top of those uh, statues trying to bring them shits down, mm -hmm. that shit got squashed real, real fucking, fucking fast. fast. 100%. Yeah. They because were hard. they were not Trump supporters. Yeah. Period. And so, and that's the hard part for me, right? Is it a color thing or is it a um, political thing, right? Because Black Lives Matters tends to be more Democratic skewed, and Trump supporters are obviously Trump supporters. So my question is like, was the response laxed because the guy who set the whole thing off is the guy who is in charge of the response, or was it laxed just because that's kind of how our system? deals with sorts of things i mean the same thing happened yeah. with the kyle rittenhouse situation how is this man allowed to walk around with the ar-15 and brains people and the cops didn't even fucking bat an eyelash the cops gave him water and said thank you for your service you know that was beforehand though. i agree but there was still armed 17 year old with a you. rifle on his chest protecting dumpsters dude i feel you and, and the cops watched, were like thank you for your service and we watched black men get beat up for wearing hoodies you know i just don't i i feel like it I mean, this is this is a hard one for me to reconcile. It's I will say this: what 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 reconciles it for me is that I think ultimately, who is in charge of the security response? Mm -hmm. Now you could say, oh, it's DC police or this or that, but who is in charge of all of those people? The commander in chief. Mm -hmm. So if the commander in chief's people are storming the Capitol building, it doesn't seem like a far fetch that they would get inside. Yeah, yeah, true. That's what I'm saying. He almost. Almost like he was paving away for him. You know, they, he set I him mean, up down the street. They fucking – what was the the dudes that broke into the Capitol in uh, Georgia? Not Georgia. Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Yeah, I mean, like, that's like I, – th I think back to that immediately. I'm like, yeah, there's been multiple occasions where I know that people of – light, like, on the right wing, Trump supporters, Proud Boys, whatever, they have invaded 
state and now federal capitol buildings Mm -hmm. multiple times Mm -hmm. and it's like with weapons with weapons Mm -hmm. and i and blm people can't even like just be in the street just can't even gather (laughs) they can't even march without you know yeah i have a question i have a question and this is not to say that there aren't black people in this capitol hill storming but can anybody show me a picture of a black guy in the Capitol building? Did not see very many of those at all. I'm actually, just saying I'm not honest. saying that black I, guys can't be conservative or Trump that, people. I'm I'm just saying can anybody see, show me that I picture? See, I, I I didn't can't see it. Remember. I've seen a lot of different video clips and stuff. Not that I was sitting there looking for any black people. Me neither. Running, I just didn't I mean see like any. you said I don't see no black guy like holding no fucking sign thing or running by, you know, so I mean, and I'm not saying that like like I want to reiterate reiterate again. I'm not making this a racial issue. Yeah. It's about the political leanings of those people. Yeah. But if all those people storming that Capitol building were non minorities, it just tells you a little something I about the demographic. I, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it, dude. I just feel it. It was just a different risk. It's just different. You know, like I said, I've seen we 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 literally watched it happen in the same year almost, you know. So it's like just not even nine, yeah. ten months ago. Just a handful you know, of months ago. Watching the response that those people got compared to the response that this situation's getting and feeling like this situation is worse is is weird to me. It's I was watching um, back home when I went back home for COVID. Uh, that was uh, mid-March until September. When I was back home, I remember there was a lot of the George Floyd protests were kicking off, and I was watching live feeds mm-hmm. from, like, L.A. and from different cities. When I was watching the live feed from L.A., there was a group of protesters – that were walking and the cops were kind of hurting them. These protesters ended up on the roof of a apartment building, right? And while they were up there, they were using their bodies to spell out things like BLM and doing like hearts and shit. And the cops were on the buildings beside them pointing rubber bullets at them and trying to toss tear gas up there. You know what I'm saying? And these motherfuckers, all their their crime was (laughs) being out past curfew. That was their crime. Honest. And these cops were trying to pull them off the Honestly. roof of a building. Honestly. Just some random building. Just a yeah. random apartment complex that someone had uh, al- allowed them into and yeah. told them to get on the roof to get yeah. away from the cops. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any – I cannot jive those two things in my brain. Yeah. I just – and and I and I would love to hear the explanations. You know, I don't know. I don't doubt we'll ever get one, but um, <laughs> it's just – I mean, like I said, I've spent so much time – trying and then this is what i kind of recommend to the viewers everybody and stuff like that is um you know people will come to the grips with these things if these things are true and people are honestly open to the to to learning then they'll find out Mm -hmm. because i was very like when people were sitting here telling me white privilege this white privilege i'm like what are y'all talking about you know y'all clowning like there's no such thing as that like you know but then you know i really see like we talk about a clear change in demographic, a clear change in, in all th- in all that stuff, and a clear change in tactics to in response to it. So, I don't know. I just I thought that was so super weird. Yeah. Even and in the way that the media is handling it too, and the, like I said, it, it, all these people have been called protesters. Yeah. Just the whole time, protesters, protesters. This, but when the, when it was the other way around, it was rioters, thugs, looters, rioters. You know, and that was the constant narrative. I'm push. disappointed in my country. Mm. I'm disappointed in my country, and I understand that, like. I didn't get to choose where I was born. I, as much as I, in the past, considered myself to be patriotic or you know have some kind of nationalist qualities, I look at that and I feel like not ashamed, but disappointed that in my in the country that I was born in and that I served in the military for, like to look and see that is it's just man, it does it actually does yeah. affect me in some way. And maybe I can detach myself from that because I am not those people. But it does. It, it, I think it exposes us. Yeah. I think it exposes us. Imagine think, being our enemies watching that. Well, you know, and I hear that, and I would love to get into that point because I hear that often. Um, how do you feel, like you said, when you see it in Egypt or when you see it in other places? You know, I, I think for so long America tries to hold up this facade of being like we're better than everybody else. Yeah. You know, like there's this idea that we're above that. We talk it out and we're peaceful. And we we're laugh this at the videos of the African parliament where they beat the shit out right. of each other with chairs. Exactly. Or throw shoes at each other or some shit. And, and we always like clown that, but that's us too. Like yeah. we are fully capable of being just as irrational and oh, yeah. all those things as any other political system. And, and, and it, it, it sucks to have to live through it. But I think it, it might be a good kick to our ego to, to kick us down a couple notches and realize that, like, just because we have this type of system, really, we're not above being 
humans. Exactly. Yeah. We're not and above I think, that. And yeah. I think just to – for my perspective on, on what you said, which is such a good point, like when I look at it, I feel the exact same way. Like I'm not – a shame per se, because I don't really have anything to do with those people, but I am very disappointed, but I'm more so disappointed in, not in the sense that they're my countrymen, but that these are like grown adult human beings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like these are adults yeah. acting like children, yeah. like straight temper tantrum, breaking stuff, yelling. Like these are the things that kids and Sore children losers. do. Yeah, Sore this losers. is the thing that children do. And it's like, I'm so disappointed that like I live – in a world that there's so many people, so many people that are so wrapped up in their emotions and all of their little stories that they tell themselves so much that they can be driven to do something like this just because of perceived like transgressions against a character that they like. And, and you know, it brings me back to the terrorism episode. It really does. Like here you have a man who has a very individual intention. Right, he wants to be the president. He of the wants United to States. maintain his. He power. wants yeah. to maintain his power, and he's a, a sore loser and all that stuff. But us as a society, as people, will get completely wrapped up in this one individual's game. Like you know, what I mean, we'll all allow ourselves to be influenced to do all this dirty work for this man, just because you know, just, it's just like the cowboys. Like, like everybody's wearing the cowboys jersey and yeah. supporting the cowboys, yeah. and it's like they're wrapped up in this idea that if he loses, they lose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like you said, they've staked their claim. Yeah. They put the hat on and they've taken on the identity of that that group, though. You see, and it's it that's what happened. Like this is why I'm staunchly against group think. You know, is is that it's it's it causes you to act completely irrational and dumb. You yeah, know? and dumb. It causes you to be walking there waving with the fucking podium in your hand, not thinking that's t fucking a decade in prison, bro, that you're holding under your arm. And what do you think? Trump's going to save you from that? You think Trump gives a he shit that you're going to be the president in a couple of weeks? <laughs> what? Where? Where did you get that? How did you get? How'd you get from there? How'd you get from this? Let's take a lovely family vacation in Washington, D.C. to being like. You get there by convincing yourself that the election was rigged, that Democrats eat babies, that like all, all because these you had to buy into this group, though. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you said that those are all proponents of being that group, whether you're a QAnon guy or you're a MAGA guy or you're a Confederate guy or whatever the fuck guy you're trying to make yourself to be. That's what happens, though. You know yeah. I mean? When you buy in that, heavy. then you have to remain consistent with that all the way down to some dumb shit like it's kind of like if you uh, grow a beard and your entire personality is i'm the guy with the beard you're never going to be able to shave that fucking ever, beard off ever because everyone's going to be like i thought you were the beard, beard guy, guy. Yeah. yeah exactly i thought you said yeah. you were down for us man you come out here it's just like i said when we were at whiskey cake um when we were on vacation in galveston for christmas mm -hmm. i said if you you allow yourself to crystallize into this form because it protects you from the things outside, mm -hmm. but it also keeps all of the things that are negative about you inside. Yeah. And so, like you said, if you allow your character to be crystallized by the idea of being the guy with the beard, then you'll never be able to get past being the guy with the beard. And then being the guy with the beard sometimes can be like with any other thing that you make your thing. There's things about it that you don't like. Yeah. And so it's like you have to be like like Bruce Lee said, you got to be like water. Mm. Yeah. You got to be able to yeah. move and like the water doesn't change Take on whatever. It doesn't re like it changes, but it doesn't change. Like the yeah. water is the water and it's uh, attributes are that it can change. Yeah, it's that's the unchanging part about it. It's so very interesting. Yeah. But still, he told his followers that the election was rigged and he demanded that his vice president reject the electoral votes and overturn the election in Congress today. Suicide. Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. But finally, after more than four years of unfailing loyalty, Mike Pence broke with Donald Trump. The moment caught on a hot mic. Is my statement out? Yes, sir, it is. Pence's statement was blunt. I do not believe that the founders of our country intended to invest the vice president with unilateral authority to decide which electoral votes should be counted. Senate Majority Leader Mitch Perfect McConnell up. broke Same. with the president, too, telling his sharply divided Republican colleagues that this election must stand. The voters, the courts, and the states have all spoken.
They've all I spoken. I appreciate this man so much. This man might have saved democracy, honestly. If we overrule them, it would damage our republic forever. Our democracy would enter a death spiral. Fact. McConnell was blunt. I'm so Super glad. Super blunt. So glad to see both Mike Pence and Mitch McConnell uh, put their party over the cult of personality. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal to mm -hmm. me because this entire presidency has been about the cult of personality and about Donald Trump being the face of the Republican Party and the new Republican Party. Mm -hmm. um, Trump publicans, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And as much as I'm not a Republican, to see Republicans in our in our system stand up to him like whew, like i'm getting goosebumps man because yeah. i haven't seen that for four years yeah for four years mm -hmm. they've just been whatever the fuck trump says yes sir mm -hmm. we'll stand right we'll fall right behind you fall right in line yeah it's kind of a it's okay like i said i appreciate that man more than anything because i feel like that was like he stood up for democracy there. he stuck you know, his neck like, out. i don't give a fuck who what yep. what party you're in or anything but just you know what i mean to say like all right look enough is enough like if we it had the the system right we'd let the thing do thing its thing do its thing now you need to just be a big boy and let it go fair and square uh, right exactly was a huge like a relief for me um for sure but definitely i think i the whole time i was like you know kind of like trying to give trump the benefit of the doubt and i was like look you know there's gonna be there's a system for these things to get solved they're like they're gonna take it to the courts and like that's what it's supposed to be, and we'll let it just. And then, sure enough, like I wasn't expecting anything different than what happened, other than the the riot on the Capitol. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that this is exactly what everybody was supposed to be looking for: was for the system to take place and like the process to go through, and then whatever the decision is at the end, that's the decision, mm -hmm. and you just have to be like, all right, win it next time. Yeah, because you know? I, and you bring up a good point because part of me that was the other kind of caveat. Part of me wants to call cowardice on their part, like. You said they finally stand up four, four days after later. after <laughs> before he yeah. leaves anyway. So Correct. it's like, all right, you're jumping ship at the end. But like I said, I'm just glad it happened. And I'm glad that somebody out there is because, I mean, could you imagine if Mike Pence was like, hell yeah, I'm going all the way and tried to really overturn this I've been or seeing a do lot this of stuff? You I've know, been seeing like, a lot that of people been. claiming that was going to happen. Yeah. So that's I, I feel like a lot better I knowing mean, that he stood up for him. That would have been the safe bet. Cause like you said, Mike Pence was one of the most loyal guys. He was like, look, you know, like this, we're going to stand behind him and everything. But I think, um, I think obviously they're also thinking about themselves too, because yep. this is such a terrible look. Like yeah. if you were going to sign on to this, you'd have to just be, it's a death sentence. It's a you. death sentence. That's what I was saying. Like as soon as he was like, he wanted Mike Pence to do that. I was like political suicide, bro. Yeah. Like there's no way that was going to go down. Like, you don't have enough people willing to fight for yeah. you like that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go down like that. Yeah, and um, I think that Mike Pence kind of shit on all that because up until I, I heard Mike Pence's statement, I was thinking, well, you know, maybe there is still a little bit of validity here. I mean, if he's, uh, you know, if, if the vice president really isn't going to certify this stuff, then maybe all of these whispers about uh, election fraud could be true. But when the vice president's like, you put out my statement, and the statement <laughs> is like, Everything is fine. Mm. The election was, was not, not rigged. rigged. Mm. You fucking lost. Yeah, he lost. Like hearing that from the second in command, mm. who at this point is the only guy in the Trump White House that I want to hear from. Multiple. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. the other guys in the Trump White House, you know, I don't want to hear what Steve Bannon has to. Well, he's not in there anymore. But you see what I'm saying? Like uh, Democrats in the House are 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 already headhunting for the Republicans that oh, backed yeah. him during this. Mm. What I'm going to call a coup. Like, mm. the people who are backing him during this uh, attempted coup, they call him for their fucking heads, bro. <laughs> I got that tweet from AOC pulled up where yeah. she's, like, literally like, uh -oh. and all y'all motherfuckers that back this man. Blacklist. Woo. She said, uh, additionally, Congress must pass this resolution to investigate for sanction and expulsion any member of Congress who helped incite this attack on our nation. Mm. Which is kind of a, you're, you're not going to get that. But, no, well, but it's a vague, open-ended statement. I'd exactly. like to see a little, a couple of those declarative things defined. Yeah, some evidence and some yeah. definitions. Yeah. So, well, just so that we can know what, what she's working with. <laughs> but can we talk about how Ted Cruz showed up looking like one of these motherfuckers? <laughs> like, oh no, like, dude! That, I haven't seen that. Oh my oh, god! You haven't seen this? I haven't seen Ted. I know that Ted Cruz is. He was the he was leading the oh, the no. eleven senators. It ended up being eleven. I heard a lot of rumors that it was going to be seventeen. 
um, senators that were going to object, but it ended up being 11. Senators or members of Congress? Um, because I find it a lot more likely that – Maybe know, it's members of Congress. Members exactly. of Congress because there's a lot of people in the House of Representatives, and a lot of them are fucking crazy. But basically he – like 11 different – people i don't remember exactly what branch they were or what house they were in but they were signing on to object to the results of the election and that's the debates that uh michael waltz was talking about we were debating mm. and stuff like that it was ted cruz and everybody getting okay. up there talking about like we don't believe that this shit is legit this is the same guy who is backing trump who trump uh, talk shit about his wife's looks and also said his dad was the guy who fucking uh, who, who did he say his dad was part of the Kennedy thing like uh, no it was the Zodiac killer so Trump said Ted Cruz's wife was ugly and that he was the Zodiac killer and this man is is literally going to bat for this mother that's crazy you know man. how we you know how we uh always make the joke about how like you know how you constantly get radicalized oh like, yeah. yeah you're like sitting there. <laughs> it's like the oreo beard yeah you get more and more radicalized yeah it's just sitting there or whatever like listening this is what happens when you sit around and you listen to trump for long enough this is where ted cruz started in 2016 this is what he looks like now oh yeah he got the full beard now yeah <laughs> he literally looks yeah. like like he's just one buffalo hat away from being like <laughs> in the riot <laughs> Where's your zip ties in your handgun, Senator <laughs> Cruz? But if some of them guys are, are deciding to jump ship right at the right time, there's a close, some there's dummies president. who are going to die on the Senator. snake right there next to them. We gathered Here's together. Morning. Can you full screen me? At a moment of great division. At a moment of great passion. We have seen and no doubt will continue to see Looks like an elf. a great deal of moralizing Looks from both like sides of the aisle. Chieftain. <laughs> But I would urge to both sides, perhaps, a bit less certitude and a bit more recognition that we are gathered at a time when democracy is in crisis. This man has yet to say anything. Recent polling shows that 39 percent of okay, Americans Look at the PBS. believe the election that PBS just occurred. Like, wrong. PBS is like <laughs> they didn't even let him say it. Disputed. <laughs> they didn't well, even let him say it. Was there is no evidence. They they came out with the definitive period. Biden won the twenty twenty election. Period. <laughs> there is no evidence of large scale voter fraud. They didn't. They didn't feel like they not agree with that, that assessment. But it is nonetheless a reality for nearly half the country. I would note it is not just Republicans who believe that. Thirty one percent of independents agree with that statement. 17% of Democrats believe the election was rigged. He's talking about poll numbers. <laughs> and these Even are all if real you do levels. not share yeah. that conviction. They polled 42 people in the D.C. area. It is the responsibility, I believe, of this office to acknowledge and that is a percent profound of those threat <laughs> to this you, country gonna, and to the legitimate. I just want to say, so far, this man is setting up an argument on the basis that they should – he's setting up an argument that they should – somehow reinvestigate like not certify the election Related. today on the basis that 37 percent of people <laughs> polled said that they believe it was rigged that it was rigged he and has it's said like nothing about evidence he has said nothing about actual, if you had evidence you would shit. just come out and be like so the wow. report said that 18 million votes were switched or whatever but he didn't say that he was like 37 percent of yep. people believe that this was bad, and that is a reality for them. That's so if you yeah. don't want things to get scary, I suggest you think carefully about what you do in this room today. And it's like, what exactly are you saying, This, this sounds Cruz? a lot like President Trump's hour-long phone call with the Georgia Secretary of State. Because Wait, those votes? Can, you, can, you, can we pull that up? Can we pull up the phone call? <laughs> okay, well, we, we will. We will. Well, let's, because let's it, within that phone call, he's calling for this man to find votes. And he's also saying he, – he mentions the Dominion voting system conspiracy. He, he mentioned those things. And that Secretary of State, in eloquent terms, tells him, do you have any evidence? <laughs> and Trump 
does not, in <laughs> fact, have any motherfucking evidence. He has his feelings. Yeah, he just just like know? Senator Cruz has got his motherfucking poll just, numbers. Just poll wish. feelings. Dude, not even a majority. <laughs> no, not even a majority. <laughs> like, at least come with 57% of people. All he what, said was indi- some independents and a couple of Democrats don't really feel like this was really good. <laughs> hey, there's some salt out here, so we need to figure it out. We, we will not rest till 100% of people agree of any administrations that will come in the future. I want to take a moment to speak to my Democratic colleagues. Mm. And they've all I understand. <laughs> Your guy is winning right now. <laughs> if Democrats vote as a block, Joe Biden will almost certainly be certified as the next president of the United States. Yes, and we intend to. <laughs> I want to speak Duh. to the Republicans who are considering voting against these objections. I understand your concerns, but I urge you to pause and think, what does it say to the nearly half the country that believes this election was rigged if we vote not even to consider the claims it tells them of illegality no fucking and fraud evidence of election. fraud, you dumb dumb. And I believe there's a better way. <sighs> the leaders just spoke about setting aside the election. Let me be clear, I am not arguing for setting aside the result of this election. All of us are faced with two choices, both of which are lousy. One choice is vote against the objection. And tens of millions of Americans will see a vote against the objection as a statement that voter fraud doesn't matter, isn't real, and shouldn't be taken seriously. Mm. And a great many of us don't believe that. On the other hand, most if not all of us believe we should not set aside I'll the results of an election politics. just no. because our candidate may I not have prevailed. Like this to people, man. Look what it makes you look and like. And so I endeavored to look for door <laughs> number like three, a third option, and for that I looked to I history, to the He's president only 28 of the 1876 years old. What the fuck election. Is wrong with no, I'm sorry. <laughs> he just can't mush up the strength to shave his face anymore. <laughs> the Hayes-Tilden election where this Congress appointed an electoral commission to examine claims of voter fraud. Five House members, five senators, five Supreme Court justices examined the evidence and rendered a judgment. And what I would urge of this body is that we do the same, that we appoint an electoral commission to conduct a 10-day emergency audit, consider the evidence, and resolve the claims. For those on the Democratic aisle who says, say there is no evidence, they've been rejected, then you should rest in comfort. If that's the case, an electoral commission would reject those claims. But for those who that's respect the voters, simply telling the voters, go jump in a lake, the fact that you have deep concerns is of no moment to us, that jeopardizes, I believe, the legitimacy <laughs> of this. He's like, I don't want to be election. in this shot. He's like, God damn it. The Constitution gives to Congress the responsibility all over the place, huh? this day to count the votes. The framers knew what they were doing when they if gave response. If I was response. that guy back there, I'd just be shaking my head no the whole time. Yeah, I would just be back there like, please, just everyone look at me. I don't agree. I'd be, I'd be I lifting my little, mask with the – I'd just have a little sign. I wouldn't want to lift my mask because then they'd know who you were. I'd just have a little <laughs> sign. I'd just have a little sign that says I do not agree. Like, I would give them the <laughs> – I, I, I would wait till the very end when, and I would just go. <laughs> I give him just a very St- simple thumbs stand down. Up. It's a no for me, Doc. <laughs> yeah. Responsibilities to, to Congress. We have a responsibility. <laughs> this man's just. And I would urge the that we follow the burning. president of 1876. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the other rats the have Count jumped Act off of the sinking ship. allows objections such as this one. <laughs> Cue the violin music at the end of the yep. Titanic. <laughs> oh, for votes that good. were not regularly given. And let me be he clear. The this last objection man is for the state of that, Arizona, yeah. but it is broader than that. Before it is an objection for all yeah, six of the contested the talk, states like, to have a credible, minutes, objective, after impartial this. body hear the evidence here come the and make boys. a conclusion. Yeah, here come the Hawaiian shirts busting through the Capitol building. That doors. would benefit. I'm not associated with that. Both Quit I, referring to them I, as the Hawaiian shirts. That would I'm just saying. legitimacy of this election. And so let me urge I refuse my colleagues. to stop wearing Hawaiian shirts. I, so I do not care. Not everyone who is in a Hawaiian shirt is a Boogaloo boy. But Boogaloo boys wear Hawaiian hey, shirts. Hey, talk That's to all the, the guys that were, were happily rocking red hats with white lettering before this MAGA shit showed up. It's sometimes when yeah, your style Some old dude was like, yeah. God damn. 
hat, but I can't wear my favorite hat. I wore this hat every day for the last 15 years, and now I can't fucking wear this. The Kansas City Chief fans are just riled up. (laughs) (laughs) People just keep spinning them around in the fucking subway. Hey, you. I just like the Cincinnati Reds. I I just like the Reds, dog. Well, hey, I'm a Red Wings fan. They'd okay? actually be mad at you for that because you can't call it the Cincinnati oh, Reds. Oh my god! Is that not? Yeah. A, is that that a, no, I'm sorry. The Washington Redskins. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, different yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was they, trying to intentionally change, not say that. that right? They're like the Washingtonians or something like that. Damn. It's like the, now There's, their symbol just says W. They finally changed it though. I yeah, saw a video it, though. Yeah. They were like uh, this. Um, it was Prager U. Will Witt, and he was like doing a, like a, I guess he was at some sort of Native American trade show or like craft thing you know those things we used to go to in texas yeah. or whatever and um he was just asking some of those people if like he was like what do you think about like the washington redskins and shit like that and they were like i thought it was cool you know like the redskins were like a uh, like a really badass tribe like that's what we called our like warriors and stuff like that they would paint red on them and stuff like that and i was like i didn't know that but i just think it was interesting like i didn't f- say like i guess just because of the term like it was just like you can't call them Redskins because we're worried about color now. Yeah, I mean, but honestly, though, words gain like, different connotations just, too. Because yeah. I mean, we were literally getting paid by the federal government as Americans to scalp these people and bring their bring. Yeah, their right, right, true. right. So I mean, it, of course, we normalize the idea of calling them Redskins or something. Just like you used to call people coons, you know, that's not or a really colored or something colored, along those yeah, lines. Right. Like, yeah, it's just like stop identifying people by the color of their skin. It's such a weird thing yeah. to me. I mean, uh, okay, if you have to identify somebody, then I get it, right? He was a black a man physical identifier, of this yeah. high, you know, but. This idea that like people He's good are, for a white rapper. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Like that yeah. has some type of um characteristic. Like you said, the Redskins were noble people. It's like no, noble people were noble people, not because they had red skin. You had a few of them. Yeah. We got a few <laughs> of them. We, you got some shit people. We got some shit people. <laughs> so weird. So yeah. um, I'm glad they finally changed that because like the, people, the like clown when, makeup was just getting thicker and thicker yeah. with them. <laughs> just being like, it's not. No, trust me. It's not a racist thing. We just. I swear to God, we're we just don't want to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Think like, of the merchandise. Let it go. <laughs> We'd have to print all new merchandise. Think of the merchandise. <laughs> Let's let it go. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about the death because I will. don't know anything but about I, this. But first, I would love for you guys to educate me, though, on the rest of this whole thing because uh, you know a little bit more than I do about it. So just kind of giving a timeline, you know, um, we had the election, and then mm-hmm. Trump started claiming fraud, which I just thought was just – Technically, that happened first. I thought that was going to – yeah, right? <laughs> before it even got done. Yeah, he claimed I, but I always well before actually votes. true. I just – I've never seen an election go down. Like, like you just – I mean, the how many times has anybody just not conceded, let alone, like, really challenged it to this point? And so, for me, I was always just thinking that Trump was going to, like, bitch like a little crybaby, and then it was just – they were going to sweep him aside anyways, which is what's, what's happening. But, you know – here you got Ted Cruz. He's calling for this like emergency audit thing, which is like ten more days. Haven't yeah. they been looking into it this whole time? They have. Yes, I, yeah. I think this yes. is what you would call a last grasp effort. Right. Now, I would like to point towards the Senate race in Michigan. So on election night, I was following the Senate ra- race in Michigan very closely because one of the pilots that used to fly in our troop was on the ballot. So Senate, or excuse me, John James was going for the Senate seat in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Now watching that happen in real time it was a very very close election now at in the end when they were ready a couple days after the election to kind of certify the results uh he lost and he didn't lose by much but he lost and i was watching to see if he would concede Mm -hmm. and i don't remember if it was nine or 11 days after the election john james conceded Mm -hmm. he came out and he said i lost yeah right he broke from trump yeah because if he was to stay aligned with Trump, he would then be part party to this crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I, I know John James will probably never watch this, but I respect that man for conceding. I respect him so much more than I respected him when he was at Trump rallies saluting that guy. Mm-hmm. I, I respect the fact that he was, he was a big enough of a man to admit when he lost. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything from him about voter fraud or Dominion voting systems or any of that bullshit. And I think that – I thought that was going to happen with Trump. I thought that after a week and a half, two weeks, he might say, well, you know – Yeah, my bad. There's no evidence of this fraud. You know, I thought that would be the last ditch. I thought it would. I thought the last ditch was – not going to be storming the Capitol building. 100%. You know, uh, speaking of which, can we ro- roll a clip of where I'm pretty sure I was wrong here? 
um, I said, if Trump were to win, we would not see riots. <laughs> I said, yeah, I was exclusively um, um, tagging that as like a democratic styled activity. I was uh, obviously wrong. So, you know, here we are with that. Uh, but I didn't think no, he would Trump take it. didn't win. Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, I said that, or my bad, I said if they lost, that there would, I said there would be no rioting from the right. Is oh, my, yeah, right. My, and I believe me and Max said was. something similar in the sense of, like, I had a diff- I had Biden winning, you had Trump winning, but both of us agreed that there would be civil unrest. Yeah, or no matter what. I, di- I, we were all wrong on when it was going to happen. Uh, correct. Yeah, correct. true. We thought it would happen immediately. Yeah, after. nobody thought that the civil unrest would happen literally. Two months later. Days from when the man would be inaugurated as president, whoever that would happen to be, yeah. and also that it would happen within the exact same location that that inauguration would take place. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's scary, though. It's scary, though. You know, I mean, this is scary. I'm, I'm going to get into it. But first, I want to talk about this. So, like, he um, so he did lose, and then he challenged it, and they did do an investigation, right? These couples, a handful of senators did this investigation. Like Ted There Cruz were was talking tons about. of, uh, like, over 50 lawsuits by Trump himself, like, and his teams. And then there were even more lawsuits by individuals. Because I remember the lawyers up there outside. sweating. Yeah, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani when, yeah. Oh, my God. That was the funny. I never <laughs> – when that woman started talking, I was like, what in the fuck is this bitch – talking about she was talking shit to a republican who had nothing to do with the vote counting process saying i bet you are the one that hid those votes i had i was like what crazy look at that (laughs) yes full screen me dog oh i love it he's like i cannot believe this woman is saying these things oh my god she did not tell me she was gonna mention tay wavara's name in this fucking what a literal ghoul what a literal fucking <laughs> goblin Just man. Creepy. Oh, Rudy Giuliani. Oh, so God. funny. I haven't heard from him in the past uh, couple nah, days. He ever has been shit. in lockdown. <laughs> you know, it's so fascinating, though. I feel like there was a certain – because like you talked Ooh. about with this this phone call, and we're going to roll that, too. Trump has a way of applying pressure to people. Mm-hmm. You know, Trump has a way Mafia of making boss. it seem like your shit's fucked completely if you don't work with him or help him. That's his – like he said, strong man. That's tactic. how he got impeached. That's that's how he does everything. <laughs> he literally was impeached. He was impeached by the House. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because of his strong arm yeah. mafioso tactics yeah. on a phone call with the the fucking president of Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. That's that's his that's his mo. That's how he gets everything done. And so you can see how he just kept pushing all of these people to do these types of things that they didn't want to do. Um, file these fucking lawsuits. You know, do. I mean, I can only imagine the 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 tactical meetings in the White House. All right, boys, what we got? How are you gonna make me the president? Um, well, Mr. President, you you lost. I didn't fucking lose. Get this man out of here. You're fucking fired. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like I just see it like that. So you're um, fired. You're fired. That yeah, makes me think fired. of the Get fact the that um, I used to be an avid watcher of Rachel Maddow, and I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about that. I used to be an avid watcher of Rachel Maddow, and she had this board going since Trump's uh, election. And I haven't watched it in about a year, so I haven't seen if it's come up or not. But this graphic would come up on this gigantic. She had to get a new board. Her board wasn't big enough for the graphic. The graphic was all of the people who have been fired by Donald Trump. Oh, oh no. Specifically in his up? cabinet and things like that. Wow. Like, it blew me away. That's great. Like, the number of people that have resigned and or been fired by the Trump administration will boggle your fucking mind. Yep. There yeah. it is. Oh Look at she had to make it all oh it wraps god. around her. Oh my god, how old is this one? <gasps> this is March, March 1st. No, 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 no. Bring that, bring that sh- mm. newer. Okay, this That's is 2018. This is this is 2018, but look how much Oh, jeez. Um, there's more personnel turnover in this presidential administration than there has been in any other U.S. You administration say. ever. Wow. By a mile. Wow. And it's turning out to be an important thing. Go around the corner. I thought they were going to put them in, like, in between the columns. Look. New wall. All right. And it's holding so far. More, look at all the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On Thursday. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know. This was from two years ago. That's two years ago. So There's been plenty it's more turnover since then. double that, wow. obviously. And uh, it, it's all, it's everybody. Anybody who's probably ever said something against. You recognize those names. He, Trust me, there's a lot of there. Uh, he, they don't have the names on there. They just have the positions. But we're talking people like Bill's uh, 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 Sessions. We're talking about uh, mm-hmm. people like Sessions, Bannon, uh, Bolton, like all of these people. Are you going to. Let me find out that Trump fired or had resigned as many people as fucking um, 
Roosevelt had in his administration. <laughs> like, he had the largest White House staff. And let me find out that this man fired just as many people. And I, oh, that yeah. would be hilarious. Yeah, fire. I mean, so I, I see why people, you know, have always been kind of, and that, that why a lot of them are just now finding the balls to be able to be like, okay, this has got ludicrous enough that I can um, step away and still keep my influence, right? Yeah. Um, people so, like Mitch McConnell. Right. Because yeah. cause if you step away too early, you just get fired, and then then it's not a good look for you. But now you step away, it's like, well, look what he was doing. And, and some of the people uh, resigned and backed away I think with with the knowledge that this kind of day would come, come right? Yeah. The, oh uh, yeah, lots of people. I, I can't about remember that. his name. He was the guy. He has the meme photo of him like working out, but he was like the speaker <laughs> of the house. Yeah. Um, he was a, like a good looking Republican guy, yeah. tall, black hair, young, and he 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 jumped ship and. <laughs> 2018 boy he yeah, got the, he fuck, out the fuck out of there he got it the was, fuck out getting, of there i'm sure it was getting bad you know what i mean behind closed doors i can only imagine you know like you said we see what the face that their the administration presents i can only imagine what it looks like behind closed doors right. and so uh you know i like so obviously a lot of people have jumped shipped along the way but i never thought he would take it this far yeah. i ne- i just i, I knew that trump you know, we all kind of know his personality he's been in media for years decades even and so we we always kind of I, I knew he wasn't going to just admit defeat. That's not his M.O. Mm-hmm. whatsoever. But I did not know that he would take it to a place where he actually becomes a clown. His name was and Paul Ryan. I, I yeah. just had Paul to, Ryan. It was going to drive me crazy. But he was. Yeah. Paul How did Ryan. you find that? Did you just look at handsome Republican? Man all, with no, all I, I swear to God, I Googled speaker of the house. <laughs> oh. And it, within it, in the first blurb, it just talked about, like, the most recent ones. And as soon as, like, the name jumped off the page. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think in light of the of the point you just made, the, uh, you know, seeing what it's like behind closed doors, um, the phone call with the governor of, of Georgia. Secretary of State. Secretary. Yeah. Wait. I'm sorry? Yeah. Secretary. The, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, of Georgia, right? Of Georgia. Right. Correct. Okay. Who is in charge of the election process. Right. Um, and his lawyer. He and was his, the oh, there his, was a couple people. Lawyer, on that yeah, there call. was a couple people on the other end of that line, and uh, this is just a hilarious phone call. I mean, the clips, the clippage out of this phone call are just and this immense. is gonna. I think this really shows, and this will just show it. Yeah, that like there you can just wasn't feel it. Much validity. I, to I it really feel the Tony Soprano language yeah. analogy, the double speak analogy, the double speak analogy. Double speak analogy. Yeah. Yes, thank you. It, that's it was um, because that's what it is, yeah. and that is something that. They have prosecuted people in mafia for. That is something that you can get in trouble for. If You, you don't have to explicitly say it. <laughs> We're going to begin with this. A stunning phone call where President Trump has heard pressuring officials to overturn the election that he lost. CBS News has obtained audio of the president asking Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Mr. Raffensperger, to quote, find thousands of votes that he would need to win. Of course, it's only the latest gambit in a months-long effort to keep power against the will of the American people. Ben Tracy is at the White House for us. Ben, good morning to you. Some Democrats, but also some legal experts, say this could actually be criminal behavior. What exactly did the president say on that call? Well, good morning. In this remarkable phone call, the president does vaguely threaten the state election officials, implying that they could be prosecuted for not doing what he wants. And President Trump says he wants Georgia to address his claims ahead of the runoff elections there tomorrow. There's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. In a stunning phone call this weekend, first obtained by the Washington Post, President Trump pressures Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, to find enough votes to overturn President-elect Joe Biden's win. Biden has received 16... Handing the state's 16 electoral votes to him instead. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780... He just so got that tell me, on a little piece of paper. He Brad, was like, you, what are we find do? me how many votes I, I need in Georgia. And it's in not Charlotte. fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. And 
I think you have to say that you're going to re-examine it. <laughs> Tell me that well, doesn't sound like a murder. Dude, he numbers, said it's going to be costly. Right. Georgia has ways. now counted their ballots three times, declaring Mr. Biden the winner each time. The Trump yeah, campaign has times. failed repeatedly to prove any of their allegations in court, and there is no credible evidence of fraud. On the phone call, the president continued to make allegations that have been debunked. Mr. President, the problem that uh, you have with social media, they can... People can say anything. No, uh, no, this isn't social media. This is Trump media. President Trump baselessly accused Raffensperger of a cover-up and threatened that he and his general counsel may be in jeopardy. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal. That's a criminal offense, and and you know you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. Some Republicans are concerned the president's claims of fraud in Georgia will undermine faith in Tuesday's runoff elections, potentially costing his own party control of the U.S. Senate. With Vice President-elect Kamala Harris campaigned for Democrats in the state Sunday and sharply criticized President Trump. It was a bald, bald-faced, bold abuse of power by the president of the United States. Now, with concerns that President Trump may try to remain in office after January 20th, all 10 former living secretaries of defense, including the two that served in the Trump administration, wrote an op-ed saying efforts to involve the U.S. armed forces in resolving election disputes would take us into dangerous, unlawful, and unconstitutional territory. Now, today, President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and President-elect Joe Biden will all campaign um, in Georgia. All four living former U.S. presidents also, two of which come came out, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama came out naming Trump by, uh, naming Trump in their statements, but all four of them came out saying that the president needs to step down and let Joe Biden become the next president as we have. Jimmy Carter's was the best out of all of them, if you ask me. At the end, he had this great line. He said, um, the, the president needs to allow uh, the peaceful, like, transfer of power to take place as it has for over two centuries. Fucking hundreds of years. And I will say this too, I was, uh, there was former uh, Secret Service people that were speaking uh, on condition of anonymity about the possible tactics of removing him from the White House. And one of the things they said was, he has his own Secret Service detail. What they would do is block off the White House with other Secret Service members, right? <laughs> Allow Biden to govern as president from another location, they would cut off the water, power, no, all no. you. I swear to God, they were talking about they're this as smoke a. Them out. They were literally going to smoke them out. They were talking wow. real Secret Service tech because they one of the things they wanted to say and that they said in this was we do not want to pit Secret Service agents against other Secret Service because right. they have to defend him. No they matter do what. right, no matter what, no uh, matter what. Yes, like for the rest of his life too. At that, so it's like yes, yes. no. Ex- you keep your you yeah. keep your Secret Service yes. agency yeah. all I'll, the way through until you die. And like you can't use your Secret Service agents as your getaway no. drivers when you rob a bank. No, sure. But you know, but because there's an extent to this thing. But at the same time, like you. You don't want to pit American forces right. against American He has forces. his own personal detail that are required by law to do what's best in his interest. physical interest. Not what he says. And they, yeah. were, they were basically just saying, like, we are not going to physically remove this man yeah. because that could lead it to could violence. Get bad, yeah. So what we're going to do instead is uh, make sure he don't got no food, he ain't got no water, he ain't got no motherfucker. Are you gonna have to that would be the me. first time. I think that would be That's a first a for a couple. That would be the first time that not only has the White House been sieged, but it would be the first time that I think that any government has sieged its own capital, like its mm. own place. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you imagine, like, the country, like, one country sieging mm. itself. Like, that just mm, seems. Mm, mm. <laughs> oh, my God. We're Tough. sieging. The only thing that maybe you could equate it to is, like, well, no, because that's the people. The yeah. people could, like, the people could, like, make a run on, like, Gaddafi's mansion or whatever and, like, siege it out if they can't get in. But. Yeah. Like the secret the service, government, like the like yeah. the people who protect Gaddafi sieging Gaddafi's house seems like that would be hilarious, and that's what that would that's what they said that they would do. I do love though that that we we do live in in a, in a country where the idea that the president could coup us is so far and highly unlikely. Like that that just goes to sh- because we we've, we've saw other states where they with ease accomplished what this man is trying to accomplish, found the votes overturned elections um you know like iraq dude for we watched iraq have 
fake elections for years and years after we try to establish yep. democracy in there and a lot of other places where they've tried to establish a democratic a, a, de- a, a de- democracy, democracy yeah. and then watch it usurped by just yes. f- like all types I of point towards corruption. I point towards Egypt Egypt during Another the Arab one, Spring really. they uh, ousted their military leader or their their uh, uh, what, what am I whatever their, their dictator they yep. ousted him. And they say, we want democratic elections. Yeah. Now, they got those democratic elections, but their people, during those elections, elected a guy who was uh, a, from the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. That was his party, was like the Muslim Brotherhood. He started enacting all kinds of crazy shit, yeah. so they ousted his ass, and the military took over. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's it, to see that kind of thing potentially happen in America is, like you said, like, like that guy said on that phone call, we could do that to the other countries, but... Yeah. Nah, they can't. We can't do that to I, ourselves. I think that that's a cringe statement as a <laughs> university human being, but I get it though, <laughs> uh, and I feel that uh, it's like that funny. the Belarus president, that dude. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy yeah. who said COVID was fake. Yeah, right. But he he's also just said president that he became for like president. <laughs> yeah, president for like years there he is. Yeah. whatever. Alexander Lukashenko. Yeah, mm-hmm. is the long term leader. So, anyways, they've been trying to get this dude out for forever, and he just won't. He just keep being like, nope, I won. I keep winning, I won. What are you talking about? So, yeah. um, you know, I always saw this happening for Trump, but I always thought he was going to do that after the two. You know, after the two, I really thought he was going to make power moves to try and get the, the third, third going yeah. and stuff and then really try and take it there. But um, I'll tell you, this is setting a precedent. He set a precedent by becoming the president, right? Not that he was the first president outside of the political system, but, you know, we hadn't seen it. And we've only seen it so many times. But he's also setting a precedent, too, in the sense of his behavior. I, yeah. I don't think it'll happen again for another long, long time, you know, where we try and get an outsider from the, you know, oh, he's not one. Of, like, you kind of want them because the outsider guys don't give a fuck about any of the rules and the um the, the things that are in place to make sure that the thing. I would hope going. that this is a wake up call to the Republican Party to not let a cult of personality run their party. Thing again. Right. Just just at the just at the hopes of winning one election. Yeah. Because that was the thing about it is they bit on this guy just because they were like looking for some new juice and some new steam to like shake things up. Right. To get to get and and you see like you almost you could have cost your your party elections for decades off of this shit, you know? Like decades. If if Mitch and some of these other guys had stayed backing him t- down to the last thread we could have seen the republican party die just uh, uh, yeah, yeah honestly honestly it's so great. interesting well, so they made room for the up. libertarian party to see his run. yeah but those guys are clowns so it's not like they would have oh the void. my god real quick huge clown pause break i was looking up my man's josh dial the other day Ooh. and so i came across vermin supreme <laughs> in, the, in the meantime <laughs> this was a candidate for the for the Libertarian Party in this last upcoming election. Correct. And uh, I'm generally known for as a person who's running for president. I'm a friendly fascist. I'm a tyrant that you should trust. And you should let me run your life because I do know what is best for you. I'm a fringe candidate. Um, that means I'm running for president of America. Of course, uh, oh, on any given year, literally several hundred people are running for president, but you don't generally hear about them. Um, but this year things, uh, you know, got a little different and, uh, I literally blew up, uh, well, figuratively blew up. I guess I didn't literally blow up, of course. He, uh, where's the boot on his head? Yeah, he does. He also has beautiful when He white stole that idea from the president of Sweden, though. He's not the first guy to do it. The president of Sweden is a real president, and he wears funny hats to, like, official 19th, shit all the time. Uh, Great. Last year. You should look it up if you get a chance. It's like, him and candidate debate. Hat. Um, hat. I'm uh, asking you right now, are, do you still stand by your pledge made in 2008 to provide a pony for every American? Yes, I do, sir. Free ponies for all I Americans. Fucking I fucking love a dandy this performance. man. Uh, this man. At first, I thought he was just like the Tiger King guy, like just some that's weird what they guy. Said about Josh Dobbs. But I think that this man is doing a great service for America, which is trying to make a caricature of the ridiculousness that 
you can't tell is so ridiculous because it's worded and 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 talked about in this like normal way because we normally do it. Yes. Yeah. But like I, as soon as he said, like I was the whole time I was like, I get what he's saying. Crazy. He's satire. Like he's yeah. satire. He's, he's the court jester. Satire. I think I can. Yeah, I think I can run your life better than you yeah. can. It's I was not like oh. I am the. Yeah. What I like about this, guy's this great. I, and he's know, wearing a boot. I get it. Yeah. I've been I've been listening to a lot of Alan Watts, and one of the my favorite things that I've listened to from him is this concept of the Joker. Mm. And one of the things he brings up is how in our society we have taken jest and humor out of a lot of these institutions. Mm -hmm. There is no joking in the Senate chambers. Right. There is no lapse in a courtroom. Right. It is it is completely devoid of humor and mm -hmm. satire and, and poking fun. And mm -hmm. what this man is doing is saying, don't you all see the humor in this? Yeah. Yeah. I have a boot on my fucking head. Yeah. And I'm right. I, I, I love that he brought humor into mm. this this institution. I <laughs> think that is a fucking service to humanity. I love it for that. And I and you're right. That's a deeper way to take it. But as a libertarian who would like to see some libertarian ideals actually come to fruition. Yeah, he's making it look bad for sure. <laughs> he's yeah. fucking holding us down right now. Probably. I wish he would just run it as an independent. You know, that <laughs> would be great. But anyways, like I only heard about this guy because I was looking up Josh Dial quotes for Reddit. And then he was like. It was a video of him being like, I'm backing Vermin Supreme. And it was like, and then they were like, would you say you're the type that likes to, you know, back these very uh, flamboyant candidates? Because he also, you know, managed Joe. He was like, no, I didn't vote for Joe. I didn't vote for Joe. I just ran his campaign, but I didn't vote for Joe Exotic. This man, I believe. In. <laughs> I believe in the concept. Yeah. I see the vision, and I think it is hilarious. I hear that. But anyways, um, I would never vote for that man for president. <laughs> I just don't know what he'll actually like. It sounds like it'd that's be the costly. problem. It's like yeah. he's good being the guy running, and I would like I would make it to where he could get on the stage and do the debates the and everything. And yeah. But I would never one Once time vote, vote for, him. for him. I just hope that we don't dig up old tweets from Vermin Supreme <laughs> about how you know the the Jews deserved it or something. You know, like that's the thing when I see crazy people like that. I'm always like, man, I really hope you don't have some anti that he's not tweets some really I don't. Like, I well, feel then. you. I mean, that's a good point. But I personally am just like, I'm not there for that. Like, I'm not using – I'm using this man as, like, a funny way to make – like, I'm going to use him as, like, an idea to make memes. And I'm going to post yeah. him on my story yes. and stuff. But it won't have anything to do with his statements about Jews or anything like yeah, that. It's because just, that's not what yeah. I'm using him for. <laughs> for. For me, it's more of the fact that if I'm like, man, I fucking love this guy. And then somebody's like, did you not see his post from 2017 where he – and I'd be like – I, I hate when I find that stuff. Like, when I found out about Alan Watts, I mean, he's the a, first thing I did was look up all the controversial shit he's ever done because I did not want to be like – and I understand I, separating I the idea from the people. Yeah, I specifically try to get away from digging up because not only that, but, like, he might not actually agree with that statement himself anymore but still be doing the funny act and everything. So I, I always, like – I mean, I, I understand that they're human beings. Like, yes. when I look at them, like, I, the, he's a real human being, and he has many flaws, as we all do, myself included, um, which is why I like to have, like, my characters, like, my role models, if you will, be fictional characters, because they are underdeveloped, simple, simplified essences of characteristics, the which are the things, yeah. yeah, like, which are the things that I'm actually interested in are the characteristics like this man's funny satire? Yes, I dig that. But they're, they're, this is how you could descend into uh, sieging the Capitol building. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? You start off you. and you're like, oh, like I just, just fuck with this guy. He's the hero. He's the thing. And then all of a sudden you get lumped up into it. You got the his, hat on. And this is, yeah. and this yeah. is the and guy the that you know, started like, just by reading Trump's tweets because he thought they were funny. And then over time he was just like, man, he's making a lot of good points. <laughs> yeah. It makes me think of and and I don't want. Four years later, he's like walking out the fucking. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're you're going into the Capitol building with a camp ash yeah. with hoodie on. <laughs> it just, it just <laughs> damn, that's funny. It just makes me think about some like the one that jumps out at me and it jumps off the page is the fact that I know people who have been Lutherans their entire life yeah. who had no idea that Martin Luther wrote books called. The, on the Jews and their lives. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like it's to be able to separate the idea from the yep. person is a real thing. I get mm -hmm. that. I yep. listen to Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. But you got to take everything you're, together. All you're saying, I, I honestly, you might have just convinced me. Like, you kind of pulled me a little bit because after thinking about what you're saying a little bit differently, I actually think that what you're doing is you're just you're 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 walking through the through the Amazon. And you notice that there's a mud pit in your path that you have to get through. You mm -hmm. want to get through to get to the other side. 
you're just taking a second to look at what mud pit you're stepping in. Yeah. Yes. I'm not doing that. I'm just yeah, like, whatever, dude. It looks good. Like, yeah, I love the surface of this vermin <laughs> supreme guy. It's satire that you step yes. in the mud pit and it's like, oh, oh the that's juice, why. like a uh, Holocaust didn't actually <laughs> yeah. happen. And it's like, yeah. oh. Because uh, to bring it back to our conversation that we're having now, this is what I was saying earlier about how Trump kind of ran on that comp- conspiracy platform, you know, and like you brought it up a long time ago when you were talking about how he kept nodding at the QAnon people and kind of like goading them and stuff. And I took the stance that I was like, he's just, that's his influence game. That's his yeah. political You don't turn away ploy. people that are fucking with you. Yeah. I don't know if that's it's true anymore. It's hard to say anymore. that now. It's <laughs> hard to say that now. listening to him on that phone call, he really sounds like somebody who believes. He like believes it. Everything he's been that he thinks. Trump becoming media. unhinged. <laughs> he's been slowly over it, like since the election and like maybe a few months before that, he's his mental state has become weaker and weaker he and i think that he's just anymore. i think that he's convinced himself of things that may may or may not be true yeah. i think that he has i think that he's also his filter is malfunctioning now yeah. because he's just like i just need to find the votes yeah. that's all i want you to do and like and normally you think of him as being like at least i thought of him as being more like calculated calculated like a businessman like they always said you know like i'm you know like i you may not see how smart the moves yeah. he's making are chance. but like yeah you know like maybe he's you know working it i mean he became the president so he's working something now i feel like the working is is he, something's working him now the ideas are working him and he's not working those ideas anymore <laughs> i feel <laughs> yeah. like he's wrapped up in his own sauce you know yeah you can get lost the in gucci sauce. man yeah you got is, lost in his own this sauce. this is uh this reminds me a lot of what you posted the other day about um choosing lesser of two evils oh the michael francis right now, yes. I watched that, and at first, Michael Francis talks about how we should not choose the lesser of two evils. Like, that should not be um, a, a good mindset in, in cho- choosing something. And we heard this a lot when there was Hillary versus Trump, and then even in this election with Biden versus Trump. Um, you know, and I watched people make that choice, you know, and they're saying, oh, I'm picking Trump because he's the lesser of two evils. At the time, I didn't get it. You know, when Francis was going, I was like, you don't get no choice. You know, you got to make a choice. You got to, you know, you, I would much rather pick the. L- but that's what he means. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In the end, as that manifests through, at the time it seems like that, but there's still evil there, and you don't know how that's going to end up or and or manifest. At the time it yeah. might be lesser, but I just and, – and what got me to this thought was, man, it must suck for everybody who voted for Trump. Yeah. You know? Like – Outside of these people, the people who are going to go in the building, right? Those right. those are the people who are buying into all the sauce, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you did, if you were that person that you were just like, you know, better than Hillary, yikes. Yeah. You know, for it to end, to be yeah. ending this way, and who knows how it's going to end to end, but um, – and that's why I really want to take the conversation next. I've been but, looking at a lot of that on social media, my people that I know who voted for Trump and their reactions to it, and a lot of it is like – well, uh, you know, maybe we, we should just split America up or, well, you know, like um, – they're, bu- they're burning at the stake with this Yeah, too. yeah, to an extent. Some yeah. of them are saying, like, I really think Trump should step in and say something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like they still are not assigning the blame. Mm-hmm. They're more so saying, like, oh, this is just a few bad apples. It's mm-hmm. the same way we talk about police brutality. Police brutality it's yeah. like, oh, that's not all police. And yeah. I get it. It's not all Trump supporters. Supporters. But you need to look at that and denounce that shit. And you have to acknowledge that that man is is puppet stringing that whole thing, too. Like, you you know, I I, through this conversation, I've turned a lot of my view on this because I thought, you know, just like I I always try and give people a benefit of the doubt, you know, like that he didn't egg them on or that this isn't at his cost because he tweeted. I'd heard the tweets that he was telling them to go home. That rally was pretty damning. But it is. It is. And the phone call and everything, like the whole circus, when I look at the whole circus going yeah. on, you, you got to look at the one constant in this whole thing. You know, and it's that dude. That dude's been the constant driving force behind all of this stuff. That, Like I said, when I looked at Mayor Giuliani and all them filing those lawsuits, they didn't look like confident, comfortable people who mm-hmm. were like, yep, yeah. we got this. Outside of you the know? Four Seasons total landscaping <laughs> building, I didn't think that they had a competent case. Nope. <laughs> you know, and then like the whole nope, way, nope, you nope. just look like people who got their hands tied behind their back yep. and they're trying to like – hold it together for their own skin, you know, yeah. and that, that, that sucks. They well, look like kids uh, on top of each other's shoulders in a man <laughs> suit. Yeah, in a trench coat. Yeah, yep. that's They're what like, it looked like to me. These accusations are true, and we have the evidence. <laughs> and the guy at the bottom is just like, hold on for dear life. He's like, 
<laughs> like one of them like peeks out. And he's like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> like that's exactly what I feel like. I'm and so I think bad. that one of the the worst parts, like you said, it it you do have that feeling. Like I kind of feel that right now because I I was one of those people that was like, yo, look, like they're making some very very strong claims, very strong claims, but we have to let them make their claims and let them look at the shit so that way we can know that it was right. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, we, we, that's the thing. doesn't matter what the decision is. It's about people being allowed to make the claims and then the claims being checked out. Mm-hmm. Which now, is the same I thing think, Ted Cruz said. <laughs> right. But what I think that the problem is that that had already happened when Ted Cruz was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted them to do it again. again. He was like, no, 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 no. We're going to put together a different group of people than the one we requested the first time. The yeah. courts? Oh, fuck yeah. the courts. He kept putting all these We want 15 mm-hmm. individuals uh, in a committee. And he was like, five senators, five, five housing yeah. congressmen, five justices. And I was like, five justices happens to be the exact amount of justices that, that lean to the right. Yeah. Uh, like, and I was like... This is not a good idea. No. This is Hell not a good no. idea. If, if Ted Cruz could have picked them, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, literally. You, because a, when he's just saying that uh, idea, everybody's like, yeah. But then you don't actually get to see the little resolution thing that they come – the contract that they come up with to actually get that to go through. Because he's talking about doing something that had been done once before in the 1800s or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. like you'd have to update – how it works, which means that they're going to have to rewrite the whole process. And who do you think is going to write that process? Mm-hmm. Ted Cruz. Yeah, facts. Ted Cruz is going to write that process and, and his little lackeys, and they're going to fucking write and that they're the – we're going to – you know, these states are going to be the ones that pick on this the yeah. committee. And it's – you know, yeah, you know, what it, is. Right you the know what it is. Yeah, facts, it's the, the government. <laughs> um, you know, Mike Pence is the go here. You know, Mike Pence is the I don't like to give Mike Pence I credit. I wouldn't but say that. I would say no. that I have gained some respect for some people like that I had movie. little for, yeah. and I have lost some respect for people, that namely Trump. Yeah. Like, I had respect in Trump because I was like, look, you can say, like, I don't agree with the way that he's handling the office, but I liked him. Like, I think he was like, he's like a funny guy. And I was like, he has a lot of charisma and mm. stuff like that. You know, like, I, he, he's a good laugh for me. Mm. I don't feel that way anymore. It is I, like a movie. I used to think that he like wasn't. Movie. It is, and I'm gonna explain oh, that in a second. A great movie. He he was exactly me too. That was my thing with the Trump thing. Is I was like, he's not as bad as y'all are making. Yeah, he's scene. a funny guy. Like, foot coming right out of my mouth wow. now. Yeah, I'm like I gotta pull my foot out of my mouth because now he looks worse than what y'all thought he was. Looks now, um, it's like a movie though. It's like when there's that bad guy henchman. And he's the bad guy henchman all the way through. And you're like, damn, I hate this guy. But at the last minute, the he moral. flips yep. He flips to save the hero. And to sa- and that's what Mike Pence did. You know, he, he really was like riding with that, that villain for a long time. But, I mean, like I said, this could be a very different conversation had he been like, hell yeah, ride to the death of it. I want to fucking do whatever weird This was like Star Wars where you had the fucking Emperor guy mm-hmm. and Darth Vader. And Darth Vader was going to kill Luke Skywalker. And then he was like, I think I'm going to kill the Emperor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Palpatine. Exactly. Oh, gone. That was the exact. But Mike Pence is Darth Vader. It's Darth Vader, which doesn't end well, but. Bet it could have killed Luke Skywalker. Yeah, and, know, and in our analogy, Luke Skywalker's democracy. So <laughs> I, I wanted, wanted to make that. Alone. I wanted to make that clear. I was like, and I just want to be clear that we're not talking about Joe Biden. We're talking being, about democracy. We're talking about demo- democracy. The process. Yes. The yeah, process of democracy. Yeah. Yeah. Biden's about to do it to you too on the back end. Though. Biden's about to do this whole shit to you, yep. and all of a sudden we're gonna have Mama in a Harris. whole different way. In a whole different. Uh, way. One more thing I want to bring up before we, because we're moving around a lot. I want to talk about the Mark Zuckerberg uh, banning. Oh, yeah. Yes. President Trump from Twitter and Instagram and his reasoning behind yeah. it. Yeah, because I did see this. Um, Facebook Twitter, Twitter did the same thing. Twitter let him sp- say the stuff he was l- saying, but they blocked all comments and all any interaction with the post because of the same situations. Mm-hmm. They were like, uh, they said for threat of um, violence for or the, something. Put it up there. Yeah. There. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, I'm, you guys mind if I read it real no, quick? Please, we need to. Uh, the shocking events of the last 24 hours clearly demonstrate that President Donald Trump intends to use his remaining time in office to undermine the peaceful and lawful transition of power to his elected successor, Joe Biden. Ugh. His decision to use his platform to condone rather than condemn the actions of his supporters at the Capitol building has rightly disturbed people in the U.S. and around the world. We removed these statements yesterday because we judged that their effect and likely their intent would be to provoke further violence. Good call, Mark. 
Following the certification of the election results by Congress, the priority for the whole country must now be to ensure that the remaining 13 days and the days after inauguration pass peacefully and in accordance with established democratic norms. Over the last several years, we have allowed President Trump to use our platform consistent with our own rules, at times removing content or labeling his posts when they violate our policies. We did this because we believe that the public has a right to the broadest possible access to political speech, shout out Mark, even controversial speech. But the current context is now fundamentally different, involving use of our platform to incite violent insurrection against a democratically elected government. We believe the risks of allowing the president to continue to use our service during this period are simply too great. Therefore, we are extending the block we have placed on his Facebook and Instagram accounts indefinitely and for at least the next two weeks until the peaceful transition of power is complete. How do you guys feel about that censoring? I have mixed feelings on that. Uh, I, Edward yeah. Snowden uh, had a great the tweet. The biggest mixed feelings about yeah. that. Okay, um, from a personal standpoint, right? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling Mark in this one. Wait, I really, from, in, my from opinion, yeah, in my from opinion, from a personal standpoint, from a personal standpoint, right? Only because you like the guy that would have made the choice that you had made, right? It's a hard choice to make. Now, philosophically, I do no wonder Congress was pulling this motherfucker in because Look at the this power. is the power. the power. It's the power. We talk about this all the time. It's the, it doesn't matter who's wielding the power because one minute they're wielding it in your favor, but the next minute they're wielding it against it's you. That's what Snowden yeah. said when he quote tweeted this. Yep, yep. Snowden said, you might think this is a win. And it might be a win, but it's a precedence that we do not want set. I do not like the the um, uh, collection of power. It's pulled mm. up under Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mm. And that's why literally, – okay, literally our democracy was saved this week because of all the things we we're talking about, because of how hard it is for you to manipulate that system, because the power is so spread out against so many people and this and that. Mm. It's not that here. Here, this dude, this one dude could be like, great point. I'm not fucking with it anymore. Turn turn this channel off. Yeah. And that's tough, as we talk about a lot on our show, is that everything's moving to the digital space. So Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all these places are becoming more and more your speech. You I know, you. becoming more and more the platform you use to express yourself. And the... It, it, it's 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 a win but at what cost you know it's like at, when they talk about at the end of star wars or something else right? like we saved the republic today but what what kind of power have we unleashed on ourselves in the future quick and question if if they did these type of actions based off of a bipartisan like congressional decree or something along those lines uh like let's say the government had some sort of control over these or actions, if there's a vote or if or there's, there's a vote some, or something, something like that, what, do you think that would be? I'm better with that. Okay. I'm better with like, that. Because, like, I look at this, and I, I believe that he made the right decision. Me too. But I do not believe he should have the power to make that to decision. To make that, because we don't know that he'll always make that right Correct. decision. So let me – I'm going to chime in a little bit, because I actually feel a little bit differently about this. One, I kind of made a face when you guys were doing the snapping, not because I don't like that he's thinking about the – you know, the safety and stuff like that and making sure that the process happens safely and peacefully. But because of the other, the history of censorship that I know that Facebook has on its records and stuff like that, I'm skeptical about the, the genuineness of this statement. Mm -hmm. Mostly just because I know that he is already somebody that does not like the individual that's sure. doing this. But also, I see another precedent that could be set here which is that private companies that become so far reaching in the sense that so many people are using their service or their products can become so powerful that the government is allowed to take them over because they determine that that is now a public service. And the only thing that I have a problem with that is that that could also set up a precedent in which now public companies are at the privy to the government being, you know, being able to confiscate your entire operation based off of things that they get to decide. And now that's not like a I wouldn't say that that's like a high possibility of like happening. You know what I mean? But I do see that the freedom for I don't like it, but Mark Zuckerberg has the freedom to cancel anybody he wants on his own platform you know like they facebook is a company that is owned by shareholders and stuff like that they get to make their own decisions about who's ceo and then the ceo gets to make decisions further down 
And I think that that has to be maintained. That you can't just come over, like to what extent though? How would you feel about the FCC or some other regulatory body being the ones that come in and make decisions like this? I mean, I know I'm not I'm not for bigger, 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 more and more well, and more government. I'm just saying, working within the system we have, we have the FCC, and they're supposed to control like communications mm-hmm. regulations. I think this is a great opportunity where they could have said, well, you know, as a government entity, uh, we believe that the right decision is to until after the inauguration. Uh, ban Trump from from these platforms. Mm. I would feel the opposite about it. Then I would feel like the FCC does not have the right to tell Mark Zuckerberg and the company of Facebook who they have to and have yeah. to not ban. And that's what I'm saying is that because of the fact, like again, like that's what you guys are saying. I'm making the same point that, that it's a win at, at a certain cost, sure. but I'm looking at a different cost. From the yeah. and and you're talking about the the government versus private organization and how much because where I lost agreeance with you is or not agreeance, but just where I wanted to tweak a little bit the the language and stuff is I do not believe the government should be able to confiscate. Facebook. So I don't think the government should come be able to come in and say, hey, Mark Zuckerberg, we appreciate what you built and everything, but it's, it's just gotten a little too big for you to handle. So we'll handle it from here on. I don't think that that's safe or, or, or right. But I understand the government is supposed to be the voice of the people. This is what it's supposed to be. OK, I understand it's not what it is, but it's yeah. supposed to be our representation as a society. Mm-hmm. When your whatever car is a perfect example, right? When this reaches a level where it's no longer a individual product, it's a um, something that is a part of society, then I think society now has earned the uh, right to have a say at least. And that's what I'm saying is I just don't like that. I don't like it for anybody. I don't like that the government could have the sole power. I don't like that Mark Zuckerberg could have the sole power. I think that it should be a shared responsibility now where at least – the representatives of the society get a chance to chime in and say, hey, because th- right now he's making a decision unilaterally for us. Yeah. Like what he thinks is best for us. He's a dictator. Right. Well, exactly. Of Facebook. I and I don't that, like that. I think that he's making. Yes, he's making a decision, you could say, for us, but it's not a decision that actually. The problem is that there I are. I feel like there already is a a system that you just described with Facebook in the sense that we do have a say in Facebook, the amount of power that Facebook has. We have given it all the power because we put all of our information and everything on it. We use its service because it's the one that you like, or it's, you know, for whatever reason, people are voluntarily giving Facebook the attention that we are then saying that he is directing in whatever way he wants to. And I, you're right. I don't like one individual or a small organization of individuals having a so enough power to where you can filter people like millions of people's you know what they're going to interact with in certain directions but i also i think that the under like for me the underlying principle of private individuals and organizations being able to make decisions for themselves unfortunately like leads me to like under like i have to be like okay yeah i don't like that he's banning this man because i actually don't like that he's banning him in the sense that not because i want trump to be able to like incite violence but just again like i mean they i don't let, like they the would idea let gaddafi do it, it, or any a, other guy that, that i don't like i posted this in 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 my stories yesterday I, it's like a picture of a designated free speech area on a college campus and and i was saying like this isn't what a free speech area looks like and then as kind of like a a joke, but with some truth behind it, I put an outline of the United States mm-hmm. saying this is what a free speech area looks yes, like. Yes, sir. It's it's overarching. And so, like, you get to be able to have free speech. And I think that Mark Zuckerberg's free speech to, you know, or like free decision to ban whoever he wants on Facebook usurps Trump's idea of free speech in the sense because – Facebook is a private organization. Sure. It's not a publicly government run thing. Yeah. And where we fundamentally disagree is that I just believe that uh, more of a laissez faire capitalism yep. is not quite the answer. I believe a well regulated yeah. capitalist yeah. society is probably the most useful version of economic systems. Because we've had this debate before on the show uh, with the Amazon episode. So if you're very interested in this topic, go check out the Amazon episode. I yeah, think episode sure. four. Great episode. Pretty deep. Mm-hmm. But um, that's where I'm at with it, too. Uh, in the end, that's where we skew a little bit in our libertarianism because libertarianism is a spectrum, of obviously, right? Ranging all the way from anarchy to, you know, 
I'm mostly Republican, right? And yeah. and that's where I'm at with it is, and we've gotten into this debate. You're the one that actually led me to that because I used to just say, it's all the people like fuck government, right? But then after a while, you, there is a certain it gets to a certain extreme where you need overarching government to maintain some sort of boundary, and so yeah. that's where I'm at with it too. I just I, yeah, it has to be that little light dash of government and i would love for it to be sprinkled right if here. i could yeah, wipe it clean and make my own i would make it differently but mm -hmm. living and working within the systems that we have i believe that that's not the answer but we're getting there I yeah feel we're getting it's there. a it's a difference in how much of the spice of government we think yeah, society that, that's you it. think it, it, it's a little bit further up the got up a the more chain, spicy flavor like, uh, you know? the face a lot of people use facebook dog. we're gonna have to yeah. toss a little bit of government on that yeah um when i'm like ah, i think it ends around like this, this military this shit but I, I feel you right and we all have that. Well, but I say, everybody's eating Facebook. This, we got to sprinkle some government. But on I tell you, I mean, God, that's funny, Mac. I, I, you didn't, you didn't. I don't know if you got it as much as the God damn that hit me on the funny bone. Yeah. I'm buying it, you know, only because we don't have a choice. You, even like you said, right now, Mark Zuckerberg is the guy with the power, and I mean, he made the right decision right now, and we'll have to see how well that plays out into the future. But I would love for them to start, you know, even if they just. You know, like, and I love that he gave us the detailed explanation of, like, what he was doing and yeah. why he was doing it and all those things. And like you said, in the end, it's his choice. It's his platform. But it does start this very bigger overarching conversation of uh, what does freedom of speech look like in the future when we only communicate via um, these types of platforms. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you're right that the idea is you can always just start your own platform and go over there. But the, the, it also remains that not only through their public – picking and banning of people but their algorithms that we own understand nothing about they have this influence that is is an invisible hand and we're going to see how that plays out i would like to point at two different social media um groups or companies or whatever that have spawned from this conservatives getting banned on twitter and facebook idea and that is bitshoot and parlor mm -hmm. um bitshoot spawned from the youtube censorship mm -hmm. and if you go to bitshoot and you go to their main page you're gonna find things like the holocaust didn't happen you're gonna find and all the guys who are storming the Capitol. yeah you're gonna find the guys right storming now. the Capitol. <laughs> there, there you and the same <laughs> the same goes for parlor parlor is uh a conservative or a uh, a right-wing offshoot of Twitter where mm -hmm. freedom of speech is taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. Where once again, if you go to the fucking main page of Parler, you're going to see a lot of things that you would never see on Twitter. Yeah. Hard R's, mm -hmm. anti-Semitism, things like that. I because they firmly believe in freedom mm -hmm. of speech. I would be interested to see if Donald Trump is on Parler. Yeah, facts. That's I mean, a, he'll definitely gonna go somewhere question. wherever he can I'd talk. I'd be interested. But I will say that when you look at that, when I look when I look at the situation that you've just described, I look at that as a symptom of trying to sweep bad ideas under the rug. I agree. You you try to say that we're not going to give voice to these ideas, so we're going to keep them from being voiced at all on a platform or whatever. And then what happens is people who if whether they want to make videos that say that the Holocaust isn't real or if they just really love the idea of free speech, they make these platforms where you're right. It's completely filled with nothing but those kinds of people because those are the people that are getting censored right now. They're the ones that um, want their freedom of speech so much for their idea that they're yeah. willing to go to. But somewhere. also it's well, also where where, you know, like where else can you congregate to say the things that you truly believe or, or, or want to say? And that's my point is that yeah. these sites become vocalized points like echo chambers that everybody's afraid of getting caught up in in a very broad space like Facebook where you can literally be into like anything or Instagram and stuff like that instead of having it dispersed throughout all of that stuff where people can where people can talk them in, yeah you know so that yeah. you can have a disconfirming mm -hmm. experience like you were talking about mm -hmm. That doesn't I, happen yeah. in those places. Damn, so true. Because you're yeah. so outnumbered. Like one liberal guy going in there to try to – like, you know, one Bernie's guy to try to talk. As mm. soon as he says Bernie's name, they're all like, get the fuck out of yeah. here, you know, because yeah. they, don't be wanna, they don't want to hear them either. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole point. It's and so, their version of a safe space. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's the, pro that's the problem I see with stuff like that happening is, like, you – I actually think that you want these kinds of things – to be said open, open. so out in the open for everybody to recognize like that's mm -hmm. what i think you kind of hit on it earlier when we were watching some of the videos but you were like we get to see these people now mm. we you know it's one thing to say like oh yeah there's a there's some racists in the country and again i i'm with you i don't think that it's really that many people like mm -hmm. you said there's not that many people at the, at the thing mm -hmm. not that that's all the racists but you know what i mean yeah. but it's good that we see them 
-hmm. It's good that they're out there in the open so that we can know what kind of stuff is going on mm -hmm. so that way we can fix it. Because if you take your problems and you shove it into the, the recesses of your society, you shove it into the recesses of the internet, and you, you just shove it somewhere, it doesn't go away. No, it doesn't go away. It, it doesn't go you're away. You're not signing. You're it not grows shining. In the shadows. It yeah. grows in the shadows. You need to shine sunlight on yes. these infections. Mm -hmm. for and you sure. need to show them for what they are. And we have to have these difficult conversations about the state that we, as whether you want to be in the community or not, we're all in a community of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And we need to, like adults, look at ourselves carefully and say, who is it that we want to be going forward? And and we have to actually take actions that, that get us there, not just say, you people are making us look bad. Yeah, 100%. I agree. That was actually really well said, and, yeah. uh, and I definitely agree with you a lot on that. Um, so my last question to you boys, I guess, for this episode is, and it's a it's a it's a tricky one. Mm. You know, it's I a like tricky, tricky questions. Mm -hmm. Where does it go from here? I can how make, far does this go? I can make my prediction. Mm. My prediction is that we will see an unprecedented removal of a president from the White House mm. after Joe Biden is inaugurated. Mm. I do not think. Uh, he will leave peacefully. The only way I think that he leaves peacefully is if he leaves the country or leaves the White House and goes somewhere. And instead of conceding or shaking Joe Biden's hand, he instead uh, just turns it off. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I see him doing it. I mm -hmm. don't see him doing what Obama did and inviting him in and sitting him down and having a conversation. I Absolutely. see him running like a little bitch. Mm -hmm. I feel that. 100%. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, for me personally, I, I think that uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say because I like I was one of the people that Can't didn't really think that it would get to this point. Yeah. But yeah. at this point, um, I could, I would not be utterly shocked if he didn't leave the White House when mm -hmm. Joe Biden gets elected, um, which is kind of sad. And good. Go no, well, I mean that's I mean and, well, and I guess the other part about it is that I think that. Um, I think that in it will be a similar situation, but on a another level to what uh, Hillary Clinton has been doing the last four years. Like you know, anytime she gets on TV or whatever, she's like, "I had my election stolen," and yeah. and blah blah blah. But she, so, you know, she's. I think also rightly, it's like she doesn't really have the base to do that kind of mm -hmm. shit. Like the kind of shit that we're seeing now, like try to make like a a stand against whatever, like the election results. But mm -hmm. you know, I think that we're gonna see that from Trump for sure. Like wherever he happens to be. I think he's going to make a whole – like, he might have a whole fucking YouTube television show about this yeah. shit. It, like, I, who knows that's, what the fuck he'll be doing without this. That's actually where I'm worried But I definitely, I definitely feel like I'm leaning more towards the idea that he doesn't just leave. He doesn't just go away. I mean, he's definitely not going to shake Joe Biden's hand, and he's definitely not going to have a fucking conversation with him or anything like that. But, uh, yeah. I, I got to present a far more dangerous idea here because my fear actually isn't Trump anymore at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It's the idea of Trump. Right. And the reason and I say that is because look what we've seen, what the idea of Trump can do. That's a good point. Right yeah. now. W I would call it MAGA. OK, so yeah, point. MAGA. But like um, Trump's a dog, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. now we've got that dog up against the wall. And as he gets more up against the wall, we talked about he gets more and more desperate. What happens when he doesn't have anything to lose anymore? Mm. You know, like right now he's still trying to maintain something. Like we said, I, I feel like he's been going more and more off the rails with this shit since the start to the end. What happens when he doesn't have any – like, when all his cards are played, what are his, you used to talk about how you don't like him having the codes to nuclear weapons, right? I don't see it like that, but I'm just like – I can now see a world where violence ensues upon the next president, mm. you know, or something happens to try to disrupt the political system My going God. forward, yeah. right? Um, whether orchestrated by him, highly unlikely, but catalyst by him. You know, because we've already promoted. seen in the name of, yeah, right? By you him. know what I'm saying? Because it's already happened. Like, this is not unprecedented, right? So he literally just, what happens when they do give him his Twitter back or never or whatever, but when he gets it back or he builds some type of platform on BitChute or Parler or some shit like that, and then everybody's over there consuming all these ridiculous things, yeah. allegations. He could be leaking secrets. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at this point now, I'm just worried because I don't trust this motherfucker at all. And it sucks to know that you know, the damage is kind of already done. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing. We just have to hope and pray yeah. that people can come back from the brink. Because you, know I mean? you just presented an extremely, like, 
such a scary I know. moment. I know. Like when I comprehended what you just said it there, I was the like, <sighs> yeah. Like that doesn't, and the worst part about it is that that doesn't seem far fetched. No, not at all. That doesn't does not seem far fetched. It might have seemed. We far-fetched just came a off the domestic ago, terrorism. Yeah, argue, like, like I conversation. could definitely see some very unwell person making some very very bad choices. Bad choices based very on. Bad choices. I mean, they're already doing it. They're already running around with the. Podium. I mean, they, yes, they already got the damn hat on and they're just doing the whole shebang. The you know, standing and the up on the thing. And, the fucking, and it's just like, the like the, the, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just like, like you can see that the the God, stairs that they're walking down lead somewhere. Somewhere, and I just and, you know, and 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 the one theme I picked up on earlier is that that's where it started to hit me. I said, you know, everybody at this table thought it ended before here. Yep. yep. You know. And it still has not ended. So it's like, where does it end? Where does this just become kind of history, you know? Uh, and then how much happens between now and that becoming history is is kind of scary at this point to think about. I remember yeah. hearing on the debate stage that uh, if Joe Biden gets elected, Antifa was going to come to the suburbs. Mm. And uh, instead, Joe Biden was elected and the MAGA supporters went inside of Capitol Hill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I just I don't I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what to expect other than the unexpected. Yeah, I, yeah. same, same. But um, I definitely don't want Kamala Harris to be my president. No more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so please, let's leave Joe Biden alone. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but you know, I just I don't I don't know. It's it's interesting. It is interesting to think about. Um, it's scary to think about. You know, it's definitely yeah. a dangerous idea. Uh, we like to be protopian, right? And so I like to you know assume that we're gonna like you said good men stood up today and, and or yesterday and and put their foot down and said enough is enough yeah. a lot of people have stood up and said enough is enough but i you know i do worry about because 31 percent, as he said you know 17 5 percent. the guy wearing the Auschwitz hoodie like we showed from maybe i'm just scared from last episode that if you're backed up against that corner and you're a marginalized group that feels like they're not being validated in their concerns or complaints, you tend to blow shit thing. up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you tend, tend to, to blow, blow shit up. You tend to blow shit you up. Tend to blow shit up. Yeah. So I'm, I'm worried. I mean, but you know, you guys tell us your thoughts. Where do you think you see this going and like how you feel like this thing is going to kind of resolve itself through history? And uh, you know, what are some things that maybe we missed? Yeah, we, on this we would love to hear your feedback. Yeah. Uh, as always on, on any of these uh, dangerous ideas. Um, we always at the end of this, we'll kick it back to you and yeah. we would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Definitely would. Definitely would. But uh, I guess leaving on that kind of scary note. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, civil unrest. Uh, <laughs> process that dangerous idea yeah, put the for boot, a week. Put that boot on your head and try to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Internet, we'll see you again real soon. Appreciate yeah. you. Peace. Peace. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber.